It is the year 2005. The treacherous Decepticons have conquered the Autobots' home planet of Cybertron. They, didn't, they never made a hard head before. Yeah, I was gonna say they didn't make a hard head bumper, did they? Because he's he's the green one of the headmasters. Uh, I don't <laughs> recall. Yeah, I don't recall them making a hard head one. Oh. all right. I guess we just have to we have to act classy because we were introduced with highbrow. Yes. <laughs> Whenever I hold a figure, my pinky's gonna be out. <laughs> <laughs> That's just because you're gay. <laughs> I'm <Dear>. getting married. <laughs> Good cover. Good cover. <laughs> yeah, I'm Never. messing with you, man. Yep. <laughs> and as we go all over the place, there we go. How do we have this back to the screen? Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, Calvin's here too. <laughs> hey, Calvin. Oh, and Johnny. Jeez. Good morning, Johnny, man. man. Return to the broadside. Yeah, all kinds of surprises here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we salute you too. We salute to everyone and to the comments section. James Coleman says, "Hey guys, hey, hey how's it going?" Evan Former, how's it hanging, guys? And Professor C, Professor D says, "Sup, James and Evans." And James Coleman says, "Good to hear from you, Prof D." And hmm. some of us reminded us it is it is the St. Patrick weekend so we're going to give mm -hmm. a shout out to Hoist and Cosmos and any other green uh yeah, <laughs> green like transformer <laughs> No Devastator? Oh Ooh, yeah. The original <laughs> green guy, Devastator. Original not so jolly green giant. <laughs> I, I think I just uh, ignore him just the fact he always loses in every battle. <laughs> yeah, like, what don't I uh, don't spit your facts at me. I am not interested in facts, okay? I reject oh. reality and insert my own. But it's oh, true. <laughs> but, you're, but you're missing one more. Uh, okay, let's see. Cosmos, Hoist, Devastator. Um, Waspinator. Springer. Waspinator, yeah. Springer. Springer. Ooh, how could we forget Springer? Springer. G2 Megatron. Megatron. <laughs> G2 <laughs> Megatron. Yeah, and a G2 Hound. Onslaught. Hound, yep. Oh, Hound, yes. Acid Storm, the Seeker, the Rainmaker. Ah, uh, there yep. you go. The ions. Yep. Uh, I think oh. As I'm looking around my room. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I'm just, I my case. My cases are still covered up, so I can't just look and cheat. Uh, hauler. The one rainmaker. <laughs> the one rainmaker. Hauler. Uh, Johnny said that one. Yeah. Uh, G2 Mirage. <laughs> um, Scorponok has green legs and green arms. Ooh, yes. Scorponok. Yes. <laughs> 
And then Power. also uh, the the Leprobots. We have to give a, <laughs> <laughs> give a shout out to them as yes. And... They, 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 there's such an obvious layup there that they missed. The bad faction, the Leprechauns. Ooh. Ah. It, it was right there, guys. It was right there. Whoever it was right this. there. It would have been just you know Irish fighting Irish. That would have been a battle. Mm -hmm. uh, how about Dracodon? He's green. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all the way over there, so I couldn't go out and grab him. Yeah. <laughs> and Holler. Yep, Holler. Yep. 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 So welcome everyone, and welcome yeah. to another. Uh, <laughs> Frenzy Freestyle Sunday and the Children of Primus. And it's funny, I always have to look at the title because I know I'd say it backwards if I don't. And welcome to all our old school members, you know, the TF Johnny, Iceman, Fear of Courage, Toy Warp, Mr. Magnus, and myself, Spin, as we're mm -hmm. uh, going to get into a topic that actually uh, a lot of people were talking about. Um, <coughs> keeping your transformer collection clean well although i mentioned you know are your transformers dusty and people like my transformers are not dusty i admit that <laughs> yeah. anthony i think i've asked you probably i know over the course of being on the show probably two or three times how, what what you know how do you keep the dust off of them since they're on open shelves like that how do you keep the dust off of them yeah. well well my thing is just i don't keep them in one spot long enough to accumulate dust between taking things down for pictures or to mess around with and mm -hmm. like uh i keep putting it off because i don't have time but uh I'm, I'm planning on getting a bin out taking all my shelves down and putting everybody back up partially to sort out who i'm going to sell when convention season comes around and partially again just to rotate the shelves because i like doing that <laughs> so the answer is don't keep them in any place for too long. <laughs> oh, I want to sell it's, blasphemy. It's, it's funny that that's the topic because um, I just had this conversation with a guy on Instagram. Okay, mm -hmm. he's a, a Lego guy, a buddy I was in the Navy with, and um, and I was talking because my stuff gets dusty. Um, if it's not in the um, in the detolfs, those don't get dusty because they're in an enclosed space, right? But mm -hmm. the ones on the shelves get plenty of dust on them because I don't move them around as much as uh, Anthony does. But um, he said that there's a, a vacuum with the brush on the end for Lego, the Lego uh, vacuum uh, with mm -hmm. the little brush tip. Like it's like a um, kind of delicate bristles on it. It's microfiber you can use that. bristles. Yeah. It's and it's it's like electric? It's a vacuum? Yeah. Yeah. You charge it up and you just lightly go over your fingers and it gets the dust off. I want to know more about that. That sounds... Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll look through my DMs and I'll... Um, and I'll sit at the spin. You can share. Okay, cool. Yeah. I didn't buy it. Basically, yet. it's a reverse like... air dryer. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I, 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 I was going to say, if I really air too, I use that. Um, you know the air, uh, air in the can. Oh yeah. yes. Yep. Yeah, compressed air. I was going to get to that tonight. Yeah. yeah. See me uh, if I do actually need to clean somebody off. I use a little paintbrush. Oh, look at that. Is that one of those? I use Q tips too. This is not a vacuum, it's the reverse, it's a blower, but um, it's uh, cordless. Uh -huh. Once you get it on, it's got a light to help you clean. Nice. Nice, yeah. Um, is that, I is actually that like... bought it for the electronics, but come to find out, it works great for the toys, too. That's what I was going to ask. Like, and, was it, is it specifically for action figures? But no, it's for electronics. <laughs> yeah, um, and it comes, yeah, with, all the, just comes with all the accessories to help clean stuff. What? Nice. But sometimes if something sits for too long, that dust is like, it collects like uh, kind of, uh, I don't want to call it grease, but it goes to the next level beyond dust. And it kind of like, I don't know, like. Um, it will actually bond to the plastic. No yeah, joke. Yeah. I, 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 I don't mean to interrupt you, but like um, when I was a kid, I was allergic to dust uh, along mm. with, you know, everything else like air. <laughs> um actually i'm i uh me grimlock know all about dust <laughs> were you boy in a plastic bubble you uh, <laughs> my parents my parents wanted me to be the only way to get over those kind of allergies is to continually subject right. yourself to them but right. um i kept my room you know dust free when i was a kid and that that ocd kind of went into adulthood so yeah when, once we start uh, talking about what causes it and how to keep it off the toys and everything yeah i'm i got a lot to lot to share <laughs> yeah 
cool. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna need some context for what uh, Leanne is talking about in the comments. <laughs> yes, it says with regular checkups. I mean, I've heard Fear say wax to stiffen them, which uh, I believe she was referring to the floor wax, and then. And Decepticity says super lube to loosen them. So, uh, yeah. Don't. Don't. <laughs> don't. No. Talking about low hanging fruit. Yeah. I was going to say, she, she's making it too easy. Guys. Yeah. Too easy. <laughs> <laughs> So, so uh, let's see. Um, well, I know we're gonna cover the dust. Uh, we're gonna, you know, briefly talk about some of um, the Hasbro Pulse on the mm -hmm. recent twenty minutes, twenty minute episodes. But you know, as we focus more on the on the dust things, um, I mean, people have said air compressors, the the air can. Um, a few have said the soft bristle makeup brush brushes um and then there's all sorts of various uh remedies or you know options that people have used some say some say they keep theirs in boxes so they don't um they don't get <laughs> dust another says a harris paintbrush um let's see well mood lighting so nobody sees the dust um a few people say they're they're always transforming them so they never get a chance to to collect dust yeah i I was going to say, yeah, like this camera lies a bit. It's actually fairly low light in here, so it's kind of hard to notice when things get dusty. <laughs> yeah, but well, like you said, when you take pictures, Anthony, because I take a lot of pictures on my Instagram, mm -hmm. that's when you can really see the dust. Like if you don't, you know, like because I have a high megapixel camera with a high resolution, 47, I think, megapixels. Yeah. So you can, you can see like freaking holes you know microscopic holes in the plastic i've you know? i've been hit by that before a lot of times it'll be like a stray cat hair and like because i'll just be sh I, I shoot my photo photos and then when i blow them up on to to put in there uh i'll, I'll just be like oh so, there was like so many cat hairs on this figure that i didn't even see when i was doing the photos <laughs> <laughs> yeah so sometimes i take q-tips too sometimes like um some uh like because i don't you know i'll put something on the shelf man it, it'll stay there Unless, you know, again, I'm t t removing it to take a picture or mm -hmm. selling it or something like that. So it can, you know, accumulate dust. And um, even if you get, like, the majority of the dust off, like, in the cracks and, um, you know, like, the crevices, like, those forty, uh, those kind of 45-degree corners and stuff like that, mm -hmm. I just take a Q-tip and really get in there with it, you know? Yes, I'll be, I'll be showing you how to do it tonight, actually. Actually, nice. I've I've been thinking for like a long time of doing uh, these preservation videos uh, or mm. videos about the the preservation of the old toys on the Toy Warp channel. But you know, I, I didn't think I had enough viewers yet to really for people p to pay attention to it. I mean, that's useful information. That, that's very, I, useful. I, very like like it's it's like a it's like a duty of care to put that up to put that out out there regardless. You know, yeah. you said duty. <laughs> Whatever. I don't want to, I don't want to hear it. You said duty. <clears throat> well, I mean, one person mentioned um, a fig bath, which I then replied that I've never heard of that before. Oh, and essentially, they're like soapy, like soapy warm water and a toothbrush, um, so not to hurt the paint. And and then they say they dry it off quickly, um, so that way it doesn't affect the, the stickers either. Oh, it's gonna affect the stickers. Well, that's like that's like you don't don't use and the metal that's too, wet. right? Yeah, don't use anything that's wet. <laughs> that's like more effort than I'm willing to put in to de dust a figure personally. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not going that far. I mean, if you yeah. found one that was buried in the backyard, yes, wash the shit out of it and then get you yeah. some, some toy hacks afterwards. But the uh, yeah, you don't you don't wet them. You, mm -hmm. No, especially not just no. I learned my lesson back yeah. in the day with that with GI Joes. I used to do that. And, the screws would get all rusty in the leg and the back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, another person just suggested, uh, let's see, it's dusting gel, where you take small amounts of this gel, which feels like kid slime, um, rub it around your character, and it takes all the duff dust off. I've seen that, and I've also seen videos of people using it and it taking paint off of metal surfaces. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah tape too. I saw tape people use, uh, like painter's tape. And sometimes mm -hmm. it'll pull it'll pull paint right off. Seriously, but the painter's yeah. tape is usually like the weaker of the tape. Yeah, you know, you it is, it but after. it still has adhesive on it, and you're talking about a, a very very thin, not baked on paint that is forty years old. Right. That's oh. true. 
Well, I'm thinking of like newer figures. Yeah. Well. Well, that that was uh, actually I'll go with uh, Professor D's comment. This is all. This is all info I need. Looking for the Toy Warps demo. My Transformers <laughs> got mad dusty in my apartment. Never had this problem before. Um, also, as I was creating the topic, I was thinking, well, you know, I mean, the majority of us are kind of the G1s, and then, you know, you got Anthony from the Beast Wars, and then anyone that say the newer collections, the RIDs, Cybertrons, and everything, everyone has their collection on a shelf at some point. Everyone's going to have dust issues. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess it's a question of what processes work better for newer figures and, and, and older figures, because you probably couldn't dust, do the same process to a new figure that you do to a, like a 40-year-old character. Precious. You know what I think? Honestly, now that this topic has come I up, use. I never really gave it much thought. But if you like come up with like a, maybe reminders of your phone or like a little spreadsheet or something, and just have like a PM, uh, preventive maintenance schedule and just every other week just go around dusting so it won't accumulate you know yeah i do Maybe. it, I do it I when the know. time changes oh nice Cross That's something too. yeah Ooh. When, when you change your Boys. air filters do your figures yeah. I admire your resolve to do it when the time changes because that's when I'm the most tired and least willing to do things. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say too, you know, to do, like like Johnny said, to do it like every two weeks or so. You know, how many people are gonna stay on that schedule? Probably not many. Nah. Well, I mean, going with what what Johnny said in terms of the air filters, um, I kind of mentally try to remember change it every season. Um, yeah. So almost every three months. Yep. I do the same. <laughs> Don't ask me when the last time I changed my air filter was. Oh, so, Anthony, when was the last time you changed your air filter? <laughs> uh, that's a secret to ever. It's a secret to everybody, including myself. You know, all of a sudden, like you know, the air conditioning guy and the furnace guy is going to show up at your door like next week, and be like I heard they're not running at efficient, uh, you know, at efficient values. <laughs> you know, always, like, all, always nice to meet a viewer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna Google all the, the the air conditioning uh, businesses closest to you. That way, uh, we can get your shit serviced there. Wow. Or you know, our phones are gonna start popping up with like you know AC filter ads and stuff. And oh, like, you're not wrong. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Well, they're probably already hitting us on what, Facebook. That's, yeah. What yeah, a that's coincidence, true. right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Um. Actually, so yeah, going through a few more of the comments on Facebook. Um. A few people said air purifiers um, or, or soft brushes, and let's see, what's another one? Actually, there's a few, a few of them. A few have suggested the air purifiers, um, and actually, one person in in another group mentioned that they too also have um, they live stream while cleaning their collection, and, and they showed a picture of their collection, which. Um, I mean, I'm guessing this picture is, is just the corner of the room, so it may be similar to what Mr. Magnus has, but they said when they do a, a cleaning of their collection, they just live stream and, and just like have drinks and their friends are watching watching it happen. See, that'd be... <laughs> That's an idea that for a exciting. stream in the future. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> clean their stuff. Right. That sounds about as exciting as watching paint dry, <laughs> honestly. <Exactly>. I... Um... <laughs> Yeah, but then you can talk about, about what one. you got. Ain't hey, none of my friends going to be drinking and touching anything in this room. I'm telling you that. Right? <laughs> yeah. None of my friends are touching anything in the Transformers. As, mu no. as much money as it is in here, absolutely not. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, actually, I'll throw this to, uh, to Anthony. Um, Ron Friedman, does that name ring a bell? Yeah, he's one of the G1 cartoon writers, right? interesting because he's in one of the groups um and he replied and he's really and, yeah and he said um in terms of his transformers being dusty he said they're not but i sure as hell am at 91 i fart dust <laughs> <laughs> at 91 oh wow no. and he, oh. i'm impressed he has a transformers collection i i, I interviews that i read with a lot I of these writers yeah <laughs> <laughs> we should get Ron Friedman on here, Jesus. <laughs> Imagine. Yeah. That would be um, cool. The, the, the impression that I got was that a lot of the G1 writers were very mercenary and were just like, you know, doing it for the, 
doing it for the cash and just oh, yeah. banging out their scripts and going. So the idea of him having a Transformers collection in his old age is kind of interesting to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> wow, so he would have been in his 50s when he was writing back then? Wow. Unless yeah, unless he said it facetiously for an excuse just to say that he farted dust. I mean, that's oh, possible yeah. <laughs> too. Uh, <laughs> for, the, for the big setup, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm really curious to see what Toy Warp, uh, Toy Warp his um, some of his tips because I would love to get some. Because I was, I think about it all the time as I'm looking at my shelf, and I try to be on top of it as much as I can. And uh, but normally it's it's my, the process I use, which isn't the most efficient, I'm sure. But I just remove everything, dust everything off, and try to hit majority of the dust on each figure and just put it back. Mm-hmm. But that takes forever, man. That's why I, I talked to my buddy. He mentioned that Lego um, brush, Lego vacuum. So I think I'm, I'm going to go ahead and bite the bullet and get that. And you know, I can let you guys know how you know how it worked out. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd be I'd be interested. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I'd be Because actually, the vacuum uh, technically would be better because you know you're vacuuming it into some kind of canister. So you're at that point in time getting rid right. of the dust when you're mm-hmm. blowing it like uh, my unit does. Um, God damn, don't. Don't. Anyway, um, <laughs> when you're doing that, you're just sending the dust out into the air, and so you know it's still it's still there. It's just not on the figure. So actually, it would be better if it collected the dust properly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'd be really interested for I, in. Uh, for what I have set up in the other room, I have an airbrush booth, and it's got a circulator that takes the fumes and everything out of that room. Really, if I have a piece in here that I have to dust off. I take it into that booth and turn that circulator on and I blow everything off with the little can, canned air. And then that circulator takes it out so it's not just circulating back around in here. Nice. Man, how much did that cost? <laughs> uh, it was only like, I think it was like 120, 130. Yeah. Too bad. So it, it doesn't have the air brush. You know, it doesn't have my gun and my air compressor or anything. It's just a little booth about, oh, hell, I think it's maybe 30 by 14 tall. And it's made to put a piece in. You turn that circulator on, and then you're spraying, and you don't get any overspray on anything because it's right. pulling it out the back. And I was just in here dusting one day, and my lady said, why don't you take them over there and turn that thing on, and then you don't have to worry about the dust hitting the floor or hitting another shelf or anything. And I went, bitch. <laughs> just like, you, you're the one that hooked that big thing up so that it would take all the fumes and everything out of here why don't you just use it when you're cleaning man I, I should have invited my guy <laughs> I should have invited my buddy uh, SNS Hobbies on here because he, um, he has a store and he sells uh, you know obviously the things that we you know collect and everything Mm-hmm. And all of his G1s are just like spotless, man. They're like, mm-hmm. they're spotless. And he was telling me kind of in brief on how he gets it like that because I wanted to know because I was going to come over and do it myself just to see how he gets it like that, man. You know, it's because even uh, I know there's been times I've gotten, um, you know, I buy a lot of stuff off of eBay, right? Mm-hmm. And um, I'll get it and I'll clean it up to a certain degree. But in the crevices, even if I get like a, uh, I don't know, a safety pin to put, wrap it in fabric or something and get in those crevices i still can't get all of it out like you know and he gets everything out. It's like perfect almost you know that's where it helps to be a detailer i detailed cars for a lot of years <laughs> oh, yeah that would it, help. It, it also helps to know what you, like what do you what do you feel about vent slime who heard of it it's like Oh, it's like the stuff that's inside of a squeeze ball that they use for cleaning, and you just press it against it and pull it off. Oh, uh, Johnny mentioned that earlier. The, just the, the, the gel? You were talking about the gel? Yeah, it's like mm-hmm. a gel. <clears throat> I've heard people talk about it, and I just don't trust it to put on any of my stuff. Yeah. I'd trust it on something new, but I wouldn't Maybe trust plastic. it on something old. Maybe mm-hmm. plastic in that paint. You know, like, uh, like colored plastic where it won't pull the paint right. off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's about where I'd be at with that myself. Uh, Professor D says, Spin, that's awesome. You got a comment from Ron. It is saying you definitely need to invite him on the show. Oh, and yeah. Leanne J. 
G says blowing with question marks and then says uh, family oriented. <laughs> and Professor D says, Bill, turn your mic up just a touch. What? <laughs> oh, no. I feel weird looking at Calvin's face. The mic is Honestly. all the way up. Ben, is it on your end? Can you do anything? Uh, no, I already, yeah, I already have it all the way up on, on my hey. end. I can test, hear him test, fine, test, so. Am I better? <laughs> test, test, am I good? You're good. Okay. Hey, Calvin, how do you keep the dust off your boxes? <laughs> With a tile, sir. <laughs> <laughs> the advantage of a box collector. <laughs> yep. <laughs> It's I tell you, what, I feel weird blue. looking at Calvin's face because usually when we, when we're on the show, we're looking up his nose. <laughs> so I know I know all about his assortment of, of collection of boogers, but I've never seen his face like straight on. So this I'm I have um, some mixed emotions just looking at his face, just normal. Well, uh, Professor D says Calvin's looking so good today; it's making toy work blush. In. <laughs> you stop it right now. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to check out early tonight because I've got some paperwork to do, so I'm going to go ahead and do my two reveals real quick. Oh, yeah. i got a couple things, too, but you first. And Shiba Kobe says, so, sup, gang. Sup, Shiba. Shiba. Welcome once again. And over it, to you, Mr. It's an Magnus. older piece, but it's one that I didn't have here. Oh, Bludgeon. I love him. He's one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, I love that character. Uh, found no, him at Ross. $7.99. Oh. When I took him up to cash out, he was 50% off of $7.99. So I got Fucking Ross. And some change. <laughs> Ross is the best, man. I'll tell you. Any Transformer that I and don't then, own, I would buy for that price on site. <laughs> like mm -hmm. half, 50% of and $7. <laughs> last night, me and some friends got together to <clears throat> toast the green and one of them came in and said, Bill, I saw this, and I had to get it for you. So this is now being added. Nice. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. Oh, that's beautiful. Does it transform? <laughs> Technically, every, sec every second it transforms a little bit. There you go. <laughs> it's a time traveler. Yeah. It moves into the future. There you go. So yeah, what, what, what was the what was the timepiece transformer's name? Cr uh, Chrono something. It, it, Chronobot or something like that. Uh, yeah, Chronoform. Chronoform. Yeah, it was something like that. Yeah. So I, I got a package from uh, from uh, the U.S. that I managed to get a couple of interesting things out of. A couple small things. So first of all, somebody hooked me up with the very hard to find uh, Studio Series Rumble, which. I'm least in Canada, and so I've heard in in America basically was impossible to get. But they had a loose one for a good price. So wait, that's not uh, Rumble; it's Frenzy. Frenzy. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, they stole this one. <laughs> See, here's here's the thing. Usually, when Hasbro releases these guys, the blue one is is Frenzy. Uh, this one, the, they called the blue one Rumble. Yeah, for, yeah. And it's like a rare time they did that. Because <laughs> yeah. it's Studio Series, so it's meant to be like. The, the movie accurate to the movie yeah right. yeah i didn't know that i was just messing with you yeah i you know me taking everything way too seriously <laughs> <laughs> no yeah okay, so the other the other thing i got like was part of the uh dealing back and forth with the shipping so mm -hmm. this little guy here is a takara uh campaign item one of those little exclusives they'll do uh, it's Burning Cheetor, it's called, and you can only get it if you, like, bought specific items in Japan or, like, spent X money at X store. Like, it wasn't available at retail. It's just, like, a clear red repaint of a little uh, little weaponizer version of Cheetor that can uh, change into a sword, which I can do real quick here. You can just uh, give it to other figures. Nice. So this, this is like a like an uncommon little item that they just happened to have a bunch of. And when we were working out the shipping, they were like, I'll throw one of these things in if you pay X amount. And I was like, sold. I know this isn't, this is rare. So, you know, now I got this uh, hard to find thing. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Nice little bonus. Yeah. Those are, those are my two things I managed to grab. Oh, there you go. He, of course you have more than one of him. And then you can see, he said, 
I, I love how it says rumble parentheses blue, blue parentheses yes. on, on it. <laughs> we had a lot of those in the in the DC area. They weren't that hard to come by here. Really? They no, never came out here. They never saw they them once. here for a long time. Yeah, there were a lot they of those. Shelf- here. Bill, everything shelf warms in your area because everything gets sent there. That's <laughs> that's how it works. <laughs> Uh, Shiba Kobe says there was a bludgeon at my local warm- Walmart, but I'm not a fan, and I have a secondhand bludgeon on an earlier line. Uh, and Charlie says, Charlie C says, "Hey everyone." Charlie. Charlie and uh, Shiba Kobe says, uh, "Not Chronotron," and also says, "I got Studio Series Rumble is blue in my my local Walmart <laughs> a few months ago last year." And James Coleman says, we need a raw store, and Mr. Magnus Bludgeon got great articulation with his sword. Yeah, I got a loose one here. I was just going to say, this is this is worth getting. It's uh, it's Tarn with a new head and a sword, but that's okay because Tarn was a really good figure. So this has all the good stuff that he does. It's really bendable, looks really cool, transforms really nicely. Yeah, this is, this is a good one, just in general. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tarn was one of the best um, releases, easily. Top yeah, three. so th- do you like Tarn? Well, here he is with a skull face and a sword, and everything else is still the same, so <laughs> you know, that's why I recommend him. <laughs> cool. And let's see, James says, damn, Rumble's pretty hard to find. Although yeah. I think at one point a few Walmarts around had had that Rumble just, like, shelf warming. When? Apparently, <laughs> apparently um... Uh, what's his, what are you guys after the studio series snarl? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, that's one I hear is rare. Well, there's there's ten or fifteen of them on every shelf here. Yeah, there's a lot wow. of those. Too. Yeah, there's a lot of them. The only thing it's that rare. I can remember that was actually actually rare in my area that I couldn't find in the stores was uh, Cosmos. Yeah, and Cosmos right. is apparently, as we saw in those leaks, getting a straight mainline re-release so that people can actually yep. buy him. But they, and some people found them at raw stores. I saw uh, during Christmas. Yeah, this past this yeah. past Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what the hell, man? Yeah. They were getting Cosmos, Crasher, Crasher too. Yeah, I got uh, a couple Crashers. Yeah, Cosmos, Crasher, uh, the guy that we just showed, Hauler, Nemesis Prime. It was a lot of those. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the G2, the little ones, and uh, I saw two or three different places where they were showing uh, the Ark. Oh yeah, they had the Ark in there for fifty bucks. Oh my gosh, that, well, that I mean, is that, that, that's worth it. <laughs> well, I'm just wondering how many of those that they produce that they could just have them kicking around in like this discount stores now. Every Titan's been like that. Tidal Wave is the first one that hasn't been like that. I think because they underproduced it because they finally managed to hit like a good set of numbers. Okay. Did anybody um? Did anybody get the Haslab that um? That has that they put out. I, I had to just, say just, no. <laughs> this is the first has I didn't get Transformers related. I just didn't like it. Now that yeah. you've mentioned that. <laughs> oh, oh, there we go. Yeah. Yep. The fan stream. So this is actually the most successful HasLab now that it's done. Like, like out of all the Transformers ones, at least. I don't know about outside of Transformers, but this did better even than Unicron did. Uh, in, in better than Star Saber, better than Death Saurus. Like this is the one that got the most pledges. <laughs> well, Unicron was expensive, so you know. Yeah, I, I said that, and I was like, "Oh wait, Unicron almost didn't make it. They had to extend that one." <laughs> so maybe that was a bad example. <laughs> I'm glad they made it because that's I love this. This, yeah. Yeah. Did you get it, Johnny? Say again. Did you get this one? No, I, I just I saw what was this the R.I.D. series. Yeah, yeah, robots. I, I just disguised. wasn't into it, man. I, I like the concept of Ultra Magnus and Prime kind of combining. It's just, it just didn't do it for me. And for the 40th anniversary, I mean, this is what they do, you know. Yeah. Well, I here's jumped the thing. on it at the beginning. I jumped on it at the beginning because I, <sighs> I love the fact that Ultra Magnus is a combiner. But as I showed them the last time, I've got one of each of them in the box, mm-hmm. and I've got them combined over there on the shelf. Ooh. This, this up. thing is not it's not any bigger. It's the same size. It has four more points of articulation and Ultra Magnus's gun transforms into another bot. Yeah. Uh, so I it, canceled it two weeks before. I was like, mm, yeah, I'm just I, not gonna do it. I'm just not I gonna ordered do it. it. I did what you did. I canceled 
let me see. I think it ended like what Friday, Saturday or something. And I and I canceled like two or three days before. I'm like, wow, well, I, I don't want this. I, I just don't want it. Can I just say this is breaking my heart because this appeals to me and I did want it, but I was like, I got a wedding coming up. I got bills to pay. I could not swing this. So you guys are like, yeah, I was going to get it, but I decided not to. And I'm just here like, uh. Well, Calvin's saying that he got it. <laughs> yeah. And he seemed, pre seemed pretty excited about it. Yeah, but yep. his is going to stay in a box. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I watched this show. I liked this show. Uh, me and my brother had the originals. We don't anymore because they 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 got broken to the mists of time. A lot of people, a lot of people. This was a much like some people. Armada was their G one. There's a whole group of fans where this was their G one. So they're they're into this. Uh, even older than they were in Armada. Uh, if you were twelve in two thousand and one, that would make you. What would that make you now? <laughs> uh, yes, twenty three yeah. years older. <laughs> yeah, twenty three years old. <laughs> so like like thirty six, thirty seven. <laughs> Man, so That's those crazy. are the people that are buying this. The people you, you, who were you know twelve what, in two thousand one. <laughs> you you bring up a good point, and I hate to be like old guy on his lawn, right? Get off my lawn. Yeah. I don't want to be that guy because I won't want anybody, you know, shitting on. Excuse the French. Something that I care and I have like I'm emotionally charged and connected to, right? Yeah. But again, this is the. 40th anniversary of the series. You couldn't mm -hmm. do like an homage to G1, Primus, uh, an update of Fortress Maximus, uh, something, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Trypticon, something updated, you know? Yeah, a lot of people were expecting G1. I, I, I was, yeah. I didn't, this was one of the things people were suspecting based on the hints. I didn't think it was going to be this because it is such a weird pull. And to be honest with you, if this if this wasn't the 40th anniversary and this came out maybe next year, even though I don't like it, I might have just, you know, bitten a bullet and gotten it. I don't know. But out of spite, yeah. out of me being pissed off that this is what they gave us. You mm. know what I mean? I'm 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 upset about this, to be honest with you, you know? Um shit. All right, all right. Calm your geriatric ass down. Jesus yeah, Jesus. man. <laughs> <laughs> man. I can't believe this is what they gave us, man, for the 40th year, man, really. But, but you know, I could see both sides of it where it's like, you know, it the company giving us that franchise for 40 years. So, you know, us us on the old school side, we're like, okay, let's focus on something that's 40th, that, that represents the 40th year. But then technically under the franchise, like R.I.D., Cybertron and everything else wouldn't get a 40th because they fall under the company 40th and not the... And not the brand or not the part of the franchise because in a sense it's technically not a g1 40th it's the company's 40th that's right so yes. so i guess they figured well everything that's come out from you know under that brand but it's it's a fine line I, because i understand what you're saying um but then you know does that mean anyone for rid would have to wait like another 10 15 years from now for for their 40th or maybe even uh, yeah we had to that's right. <laughs> That's right. Hey, listen, don't hold the tongue. I, absolutely. You know, um, I mean, I just would like to know their reasoning behind this specific release for the 40th. Right. I just want, I would like to know. It's got to be a reason. They couldn't just, oh, this is a, up next and, and, and not realizing, you know, the anniversary date. <laughs> you know well, what I mean? Well, the other week when um, these guys revealed it on the stream that that's what they were doing, I kind of bit my tongue because you know i don't i don't collect the new stuff and afterwards you know like the first thing like in the the post chat uh you know the first thing i do is sit up and like was it just me or does it is some weird that they didn't do something g1 theme for the 40th anniversary of this i'm saying that and i'm the old toy guy i don't even buy yeah. this new crap you know yeah, yeah so, i mean uh, it, it's a good idea and it, it's a a good idea for a HasLab, but just where they doing it for the 40th is kind of weird. Yeah. That's why I was going to ask you, Anthony, specifically, because mm -hmm. you're more in tune with some of the, you know, the newer releases, you were more into it than probably we were. Yeah. How do you feel? What do you feel your honest opinion on this being released on this anniversary? Yeah. Well, like I said, it, it is kind of a strange choice because uh, if they're going to do something for the 40th, this is one of those cases where G1 would make sense. Now, it is a common thing amongst younger collectors to sort of resent the fact that the generations, the nostalgia line, etc., tends to be monopolized by G1 stuff. So there is very much a market for stuff like this. 
uh, and a lot of people were excited about this because you know it's it's a pretty well regarded show, and the toy line itself is even more well regarded. But yeah, it is a very strange thing for it to be a 40th anniversary thing. But also a lot of the a lot of a lot of the people that bought into this are like, yeah, it's weird. I'm still gonna get it because it's 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 this guy, and nobody was expecting it to be this guy. I get it. And look, it had a lot of backers. So I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. there's a lot of yeah. people who like this, right? The numbers speak that. for themselves. This, it's this, just the this timing. Is... It's just the yeah. timing is all. Yeah. I, oh, that's my cat running into the door like an idiot. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, w something that uh, Mr. Magnus pointed out was that if you have the original, it might not necessarily be worth it to get this. Uh, and it's, it's people have done the math. Uh, this costs about what it would cost to get the originals on the aftermarket. It's about the same. So if you don't have one, th this would have been a good one to get, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you might as well spend the same amount of money and get the minty fresh version with a few extra features and, you know, a little better durability because it doesn't have like rubber tires and it has less chrome and stuff. So I think that's another reason why it did so well, because a lot of people did the math and they were like, well, you know, if I want an Omega Prime, I, I, I might as well get this one because it's going to cost me the same no matter no matter which version I go with. So was this a main, like a main, did they combine a lot during the series and it was like, a yeah, main? yeah, it, it was, it was kind of interesting. So Optimus Prime was Optimus Prime. Like he was the main character from day one, but Ultra Magnus came into the show later, like past the halfway point. And he was initially like a villain because in that version of the story, he was Optimus Prime's brother and he thought that he should have been the one to have the Matrix and not Optimus because he was stronger. Um, and so he didn't work with the bad guys because he wasn't, he wasn't that bad, but like he, he repeatedly tried to take it from Optimus. And then one time a, when he almost succeeded, the matrix combined them instead. And then they started working together because the bad guys were doing bad guy stuff. And he's like, I guess I got to work with you and combine to form this thing. So yeah, he, he was introduced in like the back half of the show, but like they made all of his appearances count. It was, it was pretty important. <laughs> So he was like Starscream, kind of to Megatron and G1 to sense? A little bit, yeah. In terms he of was... trying to become the leader? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, basically. He wanted he wanted the Matrix. He wanted to be the guy in charge because he's like, you know, I was I, I think I'm stronger than you. I should have been the one to, to have this right. And, you know, but, you know, Starscream never gets better. Ultra Magnus gets better as the show goes along, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. I remember at the beginning of it, Brown would almost have to convince him we have to work together this time to defeat this evil, mm -hmm. whatever. And that, I always liked the way that they had to shake hands yeah. to transform into uh, to Omega Prime. That is a really cool bit of toy engineering that made it onto the show. Because the way the yeah. fists on the figure work is they literally do, like, shake their hands. And then uh, Ultra Magnus's forearm flips and flips over onto Optimus Prime's arm. And that forms the combined mode's hand. It's a really cool bit of like storytelling that they also reflected in the in the figure's transformation, and they made a point of saying that's still preserved here because it's a neat little kind of transformation gimmick. Well, it's funny that Bill brought up that point of um, you know, of Magnus uh, Magnus being the bad guy and and then eventually working with Optimus because I'm guessing yeah. they had the Decepticons. Um, you know, they had the Autobots and the Decepticons, and then Magnus is kind of this this third, technically his own faction in a sense. Um, yeah, that's basically how they played it. Which is which is funny. It's like one of those Hollywood um, Hollywood uh, not stereotypes, but just a a blueprint that they've done for some shows where it's like you know you've got the good guy and bad guys um, somewhere <laughs> cop, along. Yeah, yeah, good cop, bad cop, and then somewhere, <laughs> you know, in like season one, but then season two, um, a batter cop comes along. So now the good cop, bad cop have to work together because they, you know, there's this batter cop that that they both have to defeat. No. Yeah, I mean, you, you're pretty much summing up the whole dynamic. <laughs> but you know what? Based on what you just said, Anthony, kind of describing because I never watched the show. It um, it's funny because the G, I know G one Ultra Magnus, right? That's who I'm mm -hmm. familiar with. And he was such a soldier, man, like the ultimate second in command, you know. He was a yeah. soldier. He was uh, straightforward, military-minded. And that sounds like, doesn't sound like this guy. <laughs> yeah, no. They, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a sort of an important thing about 
robots in disguise was when they localized it from Japanese, they named these guys after G1 characters, and they weren't named that in the original. Uh, it, like, it wasn't Optimus Prime, it was Fire Convoy, and it wasn't Ultra Magnus, it was God Magnus. So they were similar, but not the same. And when they localized it in 2001, they they changed everybody's names in the dub to just be the traditional G1 names. So him being a vastly different character uh, is at least partially because he was like a similar character with a slightly different name in Japan. Okay. That's your new name, Mr. Magnus. You should, you should take that on. God, God Magnus. Magnus. God Magnus. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. I, 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 in in Japan, they love to they love to attach God to powerful names. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, these guys. This is such a weird line. Uh, the 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 they're not called the Star Seekers. What did they change it to? They're um, I, I forget now. But it's supposed to be the Star Seekers. <laughs> well, I believe they kind of mentioned it as Star Seekers or something like um, or it's not pirates. Well, they said they're kind of like pirates, but this was a cannonball that they mentioned. Yeah, um, this is a this is a obscure character. This is a character from Transformers Cybertron who wasn't on the show. It was just a toy line only character, and he was the leader of a group of pirates. And yes, yeah, Star Raiders. Shiba Kobe has it right. I guess yep, Star so. Seekers wasn't available as a copyright, <laughs> so they changed stuff. the name. Yeah. Yes. But you know, like sometimes when it, when you have a character with a neat set of colors and a cool tech specs, people people become a fan of them anyway. So even though Cannonball's not really been in much of anything except for some like text stories, people still wanted a figure of him, and they got a new one. So you what? They have a cool faction symbol. <laughs> yeah, I they like do. <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of it's kind of interesting because. Uh, the original Cannonball figure was a repaint of Red Alert from Transformers Cybertron, and this new version is a retooling of Skids, and all the new parts they changed on them look like Cybertron Red Alert, even though this figure is not being released as that. It's just this guy. Does Skids leave, like, dookie marks wherever he goes? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> skid marks. Yes, like skid marks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I contribute. You do. <laughs> <laughs> what else we got here? I got paperwork I gotta get done tonight. So Oh Peace by all out. means. I'll catch you all I'll catch you all next week. Yeah. Yeah, same. Good luck. Later on, sure, yeah, have a good evening. And there we go. Yeah. Uh, I think the next one that you showed there was a uh, lockdown. Um uh, she Ooh, Magnus. Cheers, Magnus. Yeah, yeah, this is interesting. A, before Lockdown was a movie bad guy, he was a, a Transformers animated bad guy, and so they've uh, made a new version of him out of one of the uh, weaponizer guys that split apart. This is probably the most interesting one of these guys to me. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they, they got. I ended up. Uh, I ended up doing something drastic. In my absence, really? I'm sorry. Yeah, you go ahead. I'll just I'll, I'll <laughs> mention it later. I'll mention it oh. later. Okay. <laughs> I, I was just going. Oh, in response to that. <laughs> oh well. So I, I ended up selling all of my um, all of my Voyager class, uh, all that mainline stuff. I mean, I had everything. I just oh, sold it all. I just I don't have a connection to it. I just don't like all these legacy figures and all that. I'm like, I'm, I'm an MP guy, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm a masterpiece guy. That's what I have a connection with. So, you know, I made some good money. I sold, I had, I ba I had basically everything. Um, I have a few of the, the uh, Titan class. I, I kept the Ark and the Nemesis, but everything else I sold, man. And padded the bank account, made a nice nice chunk of change on it. <laughs> yeah, I, I do have to respect that. See, yeah, I was all these re I'm gonna tell you why though, I'm sorry. All these repaints and all that, it's just, it's annoying me, and it's like, um, and some of them, you know, some some of the reissues, or they're like slight variations of the same exact paint, but maybe slightly darker or whatever. Like I'm thinking of the Dirge releases and just stuff yeah. like that. I'm like, what am I doing? I, why, why am I just buying the same thing? And uh, what, you know, and I don't even, I don't have a true. I mean, I like some of them, the concept. Like I like some of the two packs, like mm -hmm. the Orion packs, and um, 
uh, the Becoming a Prime, and some of those two packs and specialty packs I do like. But, you know, I just have way more of a connection to, like, uh, the mainline masterpieces and the third-party masterpieces. So I'm just focusing on that from now on. Yeah. There's a good way of looking at it. If it if, if if it doesn't spark joy, pass it on and, and get yeah. money. <laughs> no, really. Yeah. Yeah. See, I, what's, what's that like selling, being able to sell the stuff? What's that like? Tell me what it what it's like. Well, well, I'll tell uh, you. Please tell me what it's, it's like. It's free. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> it's free. And I'm going to tell you why. So it was so, this room was so dense. And this isn't a small room. It's not huge, but it's not small either. It was so dense. You look at one of my shelves and it's just like a, a blob of color. I had mm -hmm. so much stuff packed on each shelf. And now I can space things out a little more. You know what I mean? It's just, you know. And again, you know, I got a couple more dollars in the bank account to, you know, buy more masterpieces. <laughs> See, it, it, it's it's its own arguably much healthier addiction because I'm like, I can, I can uh, you know, call my collection, bring a, bu bring a bunch of figures with me to a convention, use some of that money to buy new things, still okay. walk away in the green with extra money. And that that in itself is kind of a is kind of a fun thing for me, because I'm like, I, I have zero guilt about this because I, I technically walked away from this convention with a profit instead of spending money, even though I have new robots too. <laughs> I should yeah, screenshot my eBay store and show how much money I made on that. <laughs> I made some good you have, money. You have zero guilt too because you don't have the connection to the toys. Yeah, that's my problem. Um, I have this no, huge connection to the old toys. So, I do. Yeah. You're right. Well, I sold all the G1s too, so I didn't mention that either. So I, I didn't. Oh. I, I sold the oh, G1s. I sold the oh. G1s. It's like. Yeah, like. I, just, I, do I want, have stuff I want the masterpiece versions of everything, mm -hmm. like the newer stuff. Like, I'm not going to duplicate characters and stuff anymore. Like, I just want a, ma a good masterpiece version of each character, and I'm good with that, you know? Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Like, like, and I got stuff that I'm definitely not going to get rid of ever regardless, right? Because I know which things are, like, valuable to me. Like, I'm not going to get rid of my shelf of hubcaps I've been building up. I'm not going to get rid of any of the hot rods, you know? Um, several other things, too. So it's, it's, only, it's only the stuff where I'm like, yeah, I can do without this. <laughs> and I proved to myself that I'm not a hoarder. Yeah. I've Plus, been I will say, my wife would be as being a hoarder. <laughs> One advantage of me being a, a mainline collector, because of the lower prices, if I sell something and I find that I regretted selling it, it's not super hard to get to get back, you know, because okay. individual mainline stuff is too expensive anyway. But the fact but, that you know I, what, to I, be I honest, that makes me more willing to let it go, you know. <laughs> so look, I'm like I'm a, I'm like a fan toys like fanboy. Every anything yeah. they put out, I get. I just love fan toys to death, right? But. A few years back, it felt like that their releases used to kind of uh, appreciate, you know, like, like after they sell out, they kind of, you know, in the sh like in the sneaker world, dead stock, right? You mm -hmm. couldn't get them anymore; they would appreciate the price. But they, it, it doesn't seem to be that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. Like weird. Uh, I go to eBay and I look at certain uh, things. Like a few years back, I know would have been a lot more with that late tax, and you could yeah. get stuff under retail. You know, uh, I'm like, wow, it's. I wonder why that why why that's you know the case. I mean, I have I'm theories. Well, uh, go ahead with your theories. Uh, I'm I'm not the only person, but a lot of people did switch to uh, mainline collecting as opposed to masterpiece collecting, starting with Siege in 2019 and continuing to today. Like uh, Fans Toys did a hot rod that I used to have because I thought it was better than the official masterpiece hot rod. Uh, I eventually sold it on because the Studio Series one came out and. Gave I me agree. all the stuff I wanted from a hot rod, in a, and I, I thought it outdid the fans' toys one. So maybe it's that type of it thing at large. <laughs> Only in looks, not in, not in engineer, not in um, not in materials, but the way it looks, I agree with you. I think it's better than the fans' toys because I yeah. had I sold it, but I did have that. But I do think there was like a shift to mainline starting with Siege oh, by definitely. a lot of collectors. Because <laughs> I never collect the Voyager class main. I never did that. But mm -hmm. when um when the Netflix um releases came out. Yeah. And I looked at it, I'm like, wow, this is a, like G1 looking stuff. I'm like, and it sparked something in me, right? And mm -hmm. I just went on the run from Netflix to Siege to Earthrise to Legacy, United, da, 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 da. And I just went all in, you know? Yeah. yeah. So that that's my theory, at least. <laughs> no, you're right. Because I, 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 I'm part of what your theory. I, I did that. 
Mm-hmm. Well, Professor D says, uh, Johnny, like you, I'm probably going to sell off all my main stuff at TFCon in July, which is in Toronto that, that we will be there. Just keep mm-hmm. G1 and MP. But then also says, ah, oh, Johnny, sold the G1s? No. I when did. I started collecting MPs, it seemed like I might not need the G1s. But when I put MPs on display in glass next to G1 glass, in, in glass, the G1s no, is. was more charming. He's right. Mm-hmm. He is right. And Charlie C says, I think fan toys crazy. The fan toys crazy has died down. Higher prices and people moving to legends. He's right. He's right. He's right with that because there, there, there are more options now. Like those legend, those little mini masterpiece, uh, like mm-hmm. New Age and Magic Square and all that. That wasn't yeah. really as big as it is now. So he's right about that. Yeah, I got I got my little new age hubcap, and I'm like, I would go in on this scale if I wasn't already into this scale. And this also this is a very expensive scale, but like I agree, the Legends Jeez. class guys these days are really great. <laughs> Which company is that, Anthony? Uh this is a new age is a yeah. version of hubcap. Yeah. Because you know, it's my favorite D list guy. Um he came in a two pack with Bug Bite. Uh I, I, I split the set with somebody, uh, so that I could just get the hubcap. Nice. Uh, they look like penny racers. Yeah, well, that's because that's what they were originally supposed to be. Yep. Um, the micro change toys that became mm-hmm. the mini bots <clears throat> were supposed to look like Takara's uh, penny racer uh, toys. Who said that about the penny racers? Now I gotta break them out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, like, that was on purpose because the micro change guys, they, they weren't supposed to be changing into real cars. They were supposed to be changing into into penny racer toy cars the same way you had, like, yeah, there, there's an example of it. Does that you mold see, look familiar? Oh, man. Yeah. Clip jumper. Yep, yeah. There it is. Clip jumper. Um, hold on. This is a whole box of penny racers. And look who makes it Takara. <laughs> Takara. Yeah, imagine that. <laughs> get back open. Yeah, it, but it's kind of interesting because you had like Soundwave was a micro change guy changed into a real mini cassette player. Megatron was a micro change guy changed into a real gun. So the mini bots were supposed to change into real penny racer toys. Like that was the theme they had going. And it was only when they imported them as transformers that they rewrote it and being like, oh, they change into actual cars. This is we're just going to ignore the funky shape of them. Oh, yeah, Corvette, right and look at the paint theme. Ah, tracks. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> nice. It's also um, the plastic world has to be a lot like the diecast world because <laughs> in the diecast world, Matchbox Hot Wheels both have made large and small versions of their castings. Um, let's say, you know, this is um, 164 scale. Uh, Hot Wheels car, okay, Mm -hmm. they would also make a larger scale of it, especially Matchbox would make like a 132nd scale. It was the same thing. It's really easy for these companies to upscale or downscale their their either their dies for uh, die cast or for the molds for the for the plastic. So yeah, that's probably where a lot of your mini bots came from was the penny racers being um, uh, just a slightly different retooling, but with the same mold of the, of the penny razors yeah might have literally used them <laughs> yeah Frankenstein says new age is killing me yeah that's why that's why i, <laughs> I got my that's one guy man. and then that's checked out <laughs> like he's brilliant i cannot afford to go deeper on this you know <laughs> they're, too, they're too damn expensive bro they need to, those prices yeah. are crazy even the well, chinese prices are still expensive <laughs> johnny you said that the prices were you know below retail a lot on would you say that that, that main oh, line? Um, like, yeah, if you go to eBay and you look up. Fast, well, so think like, about it though, too. Like you know, for years after G one fell out of favor, you can pick up G one toys for dirt, dirt cheap. I mean, can you imagine finding sealed box G ones at around nineteen ninety one for a buck a piece at a garage sale? Oh yeah. yeah didn't didn't Decepticity talk about getting some of those guys for like really cheap because it was the exact little slice of time in like the nineties when nobody yep. cared? Yeah. Yep. yep. There's a guy too. Um, he's pretty popular on YouTube. He's a, he's I don't know if he's Irish or Scottish or something, but um, he has a crazy Transformers collection, man. I mean, insane. And um, he he got the majority of his collection during that time period you're talking about. He got them mm-hmm. all for like dirt cheap, dirt cheap, everything in a box. And was um, it on Instagram? Okay, I think of um, um I, somebody I... sent me a YouTube video and um and I watched it and um I think he's doing reviews too now. Because um, okay. I saw it shows these store. I was gonna. I was looking at the Primus. I want to get that um, Studio Cell One Primus. Um, 
and uh, Show Z has them for two ninety nine. So I think I'm going to get it. I just haven't pulled the trigger yet. It's basically the same mold as the Unicron they released, but it's Primus. And um, he oh, did yeah, the review. Yeah. yeah, he did the review for Primus on it. And um, yeah, he, he's pretty good at what he does, but his collection is insane. Insane. Mm. Like he has, a, that, he might have a $2 million collection. Everything is in Crazy. pristine condition in mm. boxes and just insane. Let me catch up on the comments. Uh, Freakenstein, hey, Freakenstein, he says, uh, I think I bought like 30 in the last six months. Uh, Professor D says, yeah, it was all in new age for the first few years, but the prices have gone up and now they're as expensive as some MPs. So exactly. I had to stop buying them. Uh, if Freakenstein says, if it doesn't say micro machines, it's not the real thing. <laughs> and Charlie C says, some of the new age prices are matching masterpiece third party prices. Um, wow. that's the thing like i know for myself like i'm still connected to that g1 nostalgia um but i mean i will say the the masterpiece and like the third party and all of the newer figures you know really focused on the cartoon accuracy of of, of the toys that you know we wish we had when we were kids um i always question you know do some of these lines what, did they actually create all of those characters that existed back in the 80s as these newer figures? Because um, I think it, for some lines, it's like they're still missing some figures. But so there's a handful of the of the G1s, but not not all of them. Um, if, if, say, you wanted to complete a complete line of of G1, but in the newer figures, but then it's that expensive rabbit hole of like, you know, you buy one of these then you've got to get the rest of them and, and just keep going. And, and it, it is costly. Yeah. It's like I, I'm just transforming my hubcap here. And I'm like, I do get where the money's going. Uh, the engineer, of, it's crazy. Yeah. One, one of his feet's not done yet. So don't take this as his example. Uh, but like, it really is like a mini masterpiece scale type guy. And the amount of engineering on him is like crazy for the scale. So I'm like, I get why he costs what he does. Uh, the paint too. The paint too. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah, like he he got a fully paint. It's not gonna show up on camera. I did a review of this guy on uh, uh, Children of Primus uh, blog bots, so you can see in good in good. But like he's got little painted eyes, little painted crest, everything. Like the they absolutely like went nuts on the deco and the engineering. Like this would be a good figure if it was a deluxe. Like that. It, it, that's where we're at with this. You know. Yeah, they're outstanding. Like I'm telling you, I I know I know more about New Age than Magic Magic Square. Um, mm -hmm. I think I had the Magic Square. Um, uh, I forgot what the prime is called. Um, uh, Magic Light of, of Freedom, Light, Light of something, Freedom of Light, whatever it is. But I had mainly the New Age, and um, they are many masterpieces, man. The paint, the artic, uh, the engineering, the materials, um, the accessories they come with. Um, I, seen, I mean, they're um... great. They're great. They are. I see Freakenstein was watching. Uh, wasn't uh, Magic Square the one that Freakenstein was um, diehard about, like, like fanboying about? Oh no! Tell us if you're if you're watching Freakenstein. Tell us in the comments. Uh, let me see. Well, he did say I said it before. New Age did masterpiece sizes. I'd, I'd sell my organs. Um, I don't really, <laughs> yeah, answers your question. <laughs> Go to fan stories if you want that. I mean, it's the same, pretty much the same thing. Hmm. But to your point, Spen, what you were saying about the the expense of trying to uh, complete a G one masterpiece line, it is Ooh. expensive. And um and if you wait for Takara the main line to release everything, yep, you know, I don't think they can ever. I mean, they probably can, fifty years or something to get every everything out. But some wow. characters they're just not gonna do. Like <laughs> X Transbot just released um, Fast and Furious, uh, which is uh run amok and run about. And run about, okay. yeah. So they they released that and um and I'm not an ex trans bot fan. Uh, I don't really like them all. They've gotten better. Uh, they have gotten better. So I'll say I'll say that. But they're putting out these um kind of obscure characters that hardcore collectors like myself need to complete the G1 lineup. Hmm. You know, the okay, um, first off, Runabout and Runamuck, I would not consider that far out there of characters just because they were the t coolest two cars that the Decepticons had. <laughs> one was dope. a Trans Am, one was a Ferrari 308 GT. Yeah, they were dope. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't think yeah. anybody that showed up on the cartoon could be considered niche. I, I think I, I, think I, I mean, can agree on that. <laughs> I mean, outside of the main 
Autobots and Decepticons that we get every week on the show. And, and again, I, mean? I don't collect the new stuff, Johnny. So are you, when you say Fast and Furious, those are their names or it's some kind of tie into the Fast and Furious yeah. movie? No, they well, they can't say the real names for obvious reasons, right? Oh, okay. So it is it's their names. They're okay. not tying into the movie. Okay, that's what else. Yeah, the names. About. <laughs> right. Gotcha. They always okay. have goofy names. They always have goofy names. Yeah, because yeah, wasn't yeah. the the counter punch, wasn't it something like James and then the yeah, other one? Double Bond or, or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm surprised they went with Fast and Furious because, like, avoid one copyright by using Run Amok and Run About, but then use another copyright well, it by using Fury. Fast and sorry, Furious. It's Fast and Fury, I think is what mm. it is. <laughs> yeah. what well, the, 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 I don't remember which of these guys was named which, but the two pack of Hubcap and Bug Bite were called uh, Candyman and Bickle. And I was like, <laughs> what? I, like I, I'm guessing Bickle is in like Travis Bickle from Taxi Driver, but that is I, I don't know that which one of them crazy. was supposed to be Travis Bickle and which one was supposed wow. to be the Candyman. <laughs> so look, the New Age Optimus Prime name was David. <laughs> David. David. <laughs> just that's just a guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> are, they, are they like like oh because he's the, the 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 most the best one? He's like Michelangelo's David. We've made a sculpture. This is me reaching. <laughs> that is hilarious. Uh, to Toy Warp uh, Frankenstein says no, and also says I don't like Magic Square. It's cheap plastic. And okay, I know you're crazy about one of the two. Oh no! Mm-hmm. And Charlie C says Toy Warp, you you would like the X Trans Box car alt. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah, I think I have seen those ones, and I like those ones. The, yeah, the alt ones look really nice. Yeah, Google Toy Warp. Google um fast of uh, me the X Trans Box Fast and Fury. And um, you can see the alt mode and all that. They, they do a good job. It's, it's nice. So while he's doing that, then we also have. Oh, go. no. There they go. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Uh, so that is a weird deep pull. That is a character named Filch, as, as in Steel, from, from Robots in Disguise 2015. Um I, I, I never made it that far in the show because I didn't like the show very much, but a lot of people were very excited for this one that actually did like the show. Uh, the comments were crazy for this figure. So the official yeah. Transformers Instagram page, re- you know, they released these, uh, the new releases, and people were going crazy for that filch or filk, whatever that is. Yeah. They love that character for, for some reason. I don't know. Yeah, I get more power to them. That's a that's a slightly younger group than me, I guess. I mean, I, I I gave the show a fair shake. I watched like most of the first season, and I was just like, eh, it's not for me. <laughs> and obviously, I missed this character's intro. <laughs> yeah, let's see. There's also that's pretty cool. Oh, this one, this one. That's uh, uh how do they pronounce it on the stream? Farak, Farak. Uh, uh, that is a, yeah, that is a Marvel character, a Marvel G one character from. The issues where we first went back to Cybertron and Straxus was the bad guy and Blaster was the hero. Um, oh, okay. Uh, that is a... We never saw him in robot mode, just in his vehicle mode. And you can see there they added the lasers on the sides to make Cyclonus look like his vehicle mode in the comic. Uh, mm-hmm. So he was like one of Blaster's minions, uh, you know, searching for... Searching for uh, Searching for the resistance. Uh, he doesn't live long, but uh, you know he's stuck in people's imagination. And they made him a Cyclonus repaint because Botcon did a version of him one year, and it was a Cyclonus repaint. So they're doing it again as like a Botcon homage. Hmm. Okay. So yeah, this is the one that's most interesting to me because you know I, I I like the Marvel stuff, having read it a couple uh, a year or two ago. So hmm. this this being like a D list Marvel guy is really interesting. <laughs> Oh, freaking said, uh, freaking Stein, Stein says, uh, so disappointing. All the Hasbro news, and Char- Charlie says, C says, I almost want to leave my ex trans box figures in car mode. Uh, <laughs> Rev Rats Ride says, Howdy, howdy, at Toy Warp panel, and everyone in the chat. How's Rev Rats Ride's logo looks so much like the Transformers Generation 2 logo, like the font and colors. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <Yeah. laughs> Frankenstein says hola. Okay. And Shiva Kobe says fun facts. Uh, Shinju Chan made an original character named Herak years and years ago. IDK if, I, if the name is based off of uh, Farak. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I, let me let me look something up because I was I was asking how they were pronouncing it on the stream because I wasn't sure if it was right or not because somebody asked Bob Budiansky at one point how you were supposed to say his name and he gave the answer and it was on the Transformers wiki like he was on a podcast and they were straight up like how do you pronounce his name. <laughs> Well, who's, that's gonna how, who's gonna buy this crap here? That's how I heard them pronounce yeah. it and during the pulse. <laughs> what was uh was uh for rock. Mm. Uh, yes, this uh Optimus Target exclusive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the the note on the wiki, which I just looked up, does it says it's Ferak. So is that how they said it on the stream? Oh then they were pronouncing it wrong then. Um Yeah, but Budiansky said Ferak. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Like fair as in fair, and then a dash, and then a c k with emphasis. Okay. Tomato, tomato. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're gonna get pedantic, but if you're gonna get pedantic about it, that is how the guy that wrote the character said to say it. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shiva Kobe says, "I'm inclined to pronounce it as fair act." <laughs> or oh, fair, fair act. Yeah. Yeah. Ack, ack, yeah. Ack, ack. <laughs> this optimus here i don't know who this is supposed to appeal to i'm gonna buy this crap <laughs> yeah uh, we don't even crap. have we don't even have targets in canada so this yeah. is not going to come out here anyway not that like i want one because i don't <laughs> yeah that's uh, a hard pass for me yeah everybody knows uh well for all the americans here target existed in canada for less than a year mm -hmm. uh they bought out zellers which was a canadian chain they had a big expensive rollout and then less than a year later they closed all the stores and left yeah. it was it was messed up there's there's tough. there's still a lot of empty targets sitting around the country so not only do i not like this but i have resentment towards the company <laughs> <laughs> yeah, only only a few places where um you know where they came and and crashed and burned. A few of those places um were rebuilt and and built into smaller retail stores. Um, yeah. But there are some that are just still sitting empty. Yeah, my mall's my mall had a Zellers. It became a Target. Then it was dead for a long time. Now it's a bougie grocery store that I don't shop at. So, eh. Hmm. Is that a Ravage? Is that Ravage with him? Oh yeah, that's Ravage as a dog. Uh, yeah, the Bullseye. Target dog. The Target dog. Yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> it's called Bullseye. Yeah, Bullseye that's the dog's. Crap. Yeah, that's the dog's name. So you know, Hasbro he, Pulse has like a warehouse section now for stuff that isn't moving. Yeah, and it's a lot of. Uh, I think I saw the uh, the Optimus. The uh, what is the uh, the Santa Claus Optimus? That's on there. Yeah, Holiday Optimus. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is gonna <laughs> that, be that's right. at least. Like that's a weird one, but that's that's not that's better than this. Reprehensible, you know. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I this isn't even the Volvo Optimus. People were like, "Why didn't you use that one?" Because apparently that's a really good figure. <laughs> Did they still have the arms that stuck up like that with the speaker-looking things? That's what I, I always found confusing about that um, that Optimus that transformed like that that had the the, the ar upright arms that were the cat where yeah. the uh, engine compartment would split. Because they look like speakers. Wow. I'm trying my best not to be a purist. I don't want to be a purist. I want to be open. <laughs> I want to be open man. to new things. But like this kind of crap, man, just, you know, the whole, uh, the, the Optimus R5 Canon camera, that bothered yeah. me. You know, I'm like. This here is a very cynical exercise in branding. So like it's free, it's free game to, 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 to hate on in my opinion. And you know, I'm the most, I'm the most like everything kind of guy here. So. <laughs> well, it's funny with the, that Optimus Canon camera the the, the alt mode looked uh, identical. It looked, it looked, it looked amazing. Yeah. But I was yeah. just like, why did you pick Optimus as opposed to reflector? Well, they did do a reflector one. They did a yeah, they did a reflector too. later. Yeah, yeah. but I, I guess everyone they was did a Nemesis uh... Prime too. <laughs> oh, did they? Yeah. <laughs> crazy, well, bro. You know, you make Optimus, and you have to make a Nemesis. Like it's just that is uh... crazy. <laughs> so the, those are the rules, Ben. Yep, Frankenstein says I've been trying to find a laser beak chrome plant ball for years. Now, when I was a kid. The hospital I was had them in the gift store and my dad got it for me but somehow lost it. Has anyone seen it before? A plant ball? I don't know what that is. These are beat Are those the feeders? Plant ball. Are those like the ball the feeder balls? Yeah, I, your guess is as good as mine. 
Hmm. Well, oh. it says, I just want to target Wheeljack Buzzworthy Bumblebee. Uh, same, same. I guess he's talking about Origin Wheeljack, and yeah, that's a big want of mine. Just because the other two Origin figures, Jazz and Bumblebee, were like really good. So mm-hmm. beyond good just work. thinking doing an episode one Wheeljack is cool, I'm like, the other two were great figures, so I'm sure the third one will be good too. Damn, I would have sent you with me. I didn't know. I was I was missing an action, but I would have damn sure sent you, sent you them. I sold them for like dirt cheap. Wow. Oh, no, I have them both. Don't worry. Oh. I, they, they actually did show up here. <laughs> I Google says, it and I still don't know what Freak's talking about. Sorry, Sven. Oh, he <laughs> actually he has sent a correction that it's a laser beak chrome planet ball. Um, uh, Shiba Kobe says we had a target at Hillside Mall. I went in it a few times, but never saw any Transformers exclusive. The uh, Professor yeah. D says sup Rev Rats ride. <laughs> then says howdy howdy Professor D and also says Optimus audio blasters. <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> It was the '90s. That's where Laser Optimus came from. That's what this design's based on. So yeah, those are house speakers. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. That- <laughs> wow. Laser Optimus came out in 1995. So why wouldn't he have like big speakers blasting blasting music while he did his thing? You know, boots and pants and boots and pants and yeah. Boots and pants and pants. <laughs> yeah. Look, I remember back in the day. I remember guys were riding around with those big house speakers in their trunks. Hmm. <laughs> Blast the music. Yeah, see if you know the, 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 the technicalities of uh, of putting house speakers through an audio system. It's not going to work properly unless you adjust uh, the, the ohms and a few other things. So it may work, but it takes a bit of extra power to push them. <laughs> and then everybody turns the bass way up, so every car is just like... <laughs> exactly. Or the other guys that just uh, focus on the treble and not the bass, which I couldn't oh, understand. No. I'm just like, oh, st- 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 I don't get, I don't get that. <laughs> I, I do not understand, understand that. that. Like, Especially when bass. they got like 30 speakers underneath the car and it's all just blasting treble. Yeah. Why? Okay, it's all right. Florida was the worst two toy warp. They like invented like bass bass music in Florida, South Southern uh, South Florida. Yeah, South Florida. But oh, the area I'm in does all that treble crap. Oh, but see, some of the terrible. bass tracks back in the day, for especially like down in the floor. All came from Miami. Like, yeah, Man, like um, the Miami bass were nice back then. Yeah, what was, what was the guy, Magic Mike? They, st- they still know how to do it down there, but up here it's all, <laughs> uh, you know, up here it's all that treble crap where they put like 30, <laughs> like six by nines underneath the car and, and it's like no bass no sound quality whatsoever it's just i want you to hear the lyrics to my music whether you want that to was or the not goal. that was always the goal it wasn't about clarity it was about being the loudest and most obnoxious that was always the goal <laughs> to knock pictures off of your walls of your house yeah. <laughs> my power how how they put it in the, the Italian job? I want a stereo loud enough to blow the clothes off of a woman. <laughs> there was a commercial. Wasn't it a commercial? The uh, Maxwell tapes? Yep. Okay. Oh, yep. yes. The man in the chair with the martini and the sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, they also did one where I blew the clothes off of a woman. Yeah. <laughs> uh, type 2 cassettes. Those were, those were the days. <laughs> Before Magnetic CDs. Magnetic fidelity, my friend. There you go. <laughs> and, uh... Freaking science says, okay, who in the nineties had friends with, with house uh, speakers in their car? I, I knew a couple of guys. <laughs> I knew I knew a few. Yeah. I'm so glad that's played out now. Nowadays you see somebody riding around with big loud music, it's like everybody's looking at him like he's an asshole. Like, what are you doing, bro? It's twenty twenty four. You still doing that? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I still do that though. I don't I, mean, I don't hear that I don't hear that not not in my area. it's very rare. Cause you know why? I think everybody's just like listening to their like to their headphones and like their little iPods and everything. iPods, um, basically like their little earbuds, which I think is illegal to do. Where it's just like if I'm listening to music, I want to feel it. Like I'm not just blasting it in my ears. Like the car should have that. Yeah, I want to feel it, but I want, it, but but I want the, the people outside the car to understand there's sound quality going on here. It's not just the fact I want you to hear the lyrics of the song. I want you to hear the sound quality. Mm-hmm. That's all these guys care about now is you just forcing the lyrics and the music on you. Well, that's it's like it's like listening to an ice cream truck microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Mm. But that's why my playlist is from you know the 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 forties and up to like borderline two thousand. Like after Amen. that, I'm like I I can't. <laughs> I'm with you. Now it's, it's a few guys like I like the J Coles of the world. Some of those guys, but I'm pretty much a I like my era and I stick to it. Mm. Yeah, that's why Anthony uh, Anthony and I are into synthwave because we can listen to new stuff and it sounds old. <laughs> yeah, I, that's all. All I listen to is retro wave stuff these days. I really mm. ought to branch out, but I became entirely about that at some point. <laughs> I get mad anytime someone puts on like their music. I used to be like, oh, okay, I can get down with this. Now I'm just mad. This isn't synthwave. Turn it off. <laughs> I don't even know what synthwave wave is. Like, could you give me like a synthwave phone? is um. Well, well, you can 80s? look up bands like the Midnight or Gunship, but it's it's really like yeah. an eighty synth sound that's modernized, but still sounds like you know old time, uh, like eighties. Is yeah. it kind of like ravey, kind of house musical? Or... Well, I mean, Not it's often. a little. Yeah, it's it doesn't have like that strong of a beat. Okay. You said yeah, just, Midnight. Just, what, what's the yeah, just Google, yeah. The, Google the Midnight. They were Gunship. my favorites. Gunship probably be a little better. <laughs> I like the Midnight a little better because I think Gunship can get a bit too gloomy and overwrought for its own good. But this is like comparing flavors of ice cream as opposed to having a problem with them. You know <laughs> I was about to say the Midnight talking about having bodies underneath the floor. Somebody made a meme where it's, it, picked, it picked out like three Midnight songs and said, you know, Midnight, the up and cheery uh, synth band. And then it's like the three lines of lyrics out of three different songs. One of them was like having bodies underneath the floor. And there was like two other ones that's like, shit, you know what? I never really thought about that. <laughs> which album? Which album would you suggest? Oh, well, the, the one that put me on. Are you looking at Midnight or Days of Thunder? Midnight, the Midnight. Yeah, I, 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 I'm Endless Summer was the album that put Endless me on to them specifically. So, the, uh, if I was gonna go with one, that'd be it. But I'll yeah, Days of out. Thunder is their first one too. So that's a real good one, also. <laughs> I'm gonna check them out. Oh wait, hold on. Right. I uh, I got a real good way of introducing it to you. Do you remember the Johnny? Do you remember the movie Days of Thunder? Yes. Okay, then. I got something for you. Hold on here. <laughs> I actually I made a midnight video. Like... I made a midnight video to um, the movie Days of Thunder. Ooh, send that my way, too. <laughs> it's actually... I think I couldn't believe it. No one made, like, a, uh, a proper music video that would kind of, like, time the stuff that's going on in the movie along with the song, so I did it. I thought it turned out great, and then nobody watched it. Yeah. While I'm talking about uh, this niche music band, have you have you listened to the live album they just put out? Because it's like really good. Hmm, I have not. No. Yeah, no. The Midnight. Oh. Uh, the live album's called Red, White, and Bruised, and it's like I'm not a big live album guy, but they they really it, it's really good. <laughs> uh, it's fun funny, I would anyway. say I'm um, I'm more. <laughs> especially for certain bands i'm more for the live music than than the studio recording because then they almost like they can expand and, and just do more things with the live versions that yeah. you know they probably just Pick didn't think of mm -hmm. well professor d says hey when is the dusting tutorial coming up time is running out <laughs> oh, i forgot all about that <laughs> Uh, Freeman says, I don't know Detroit was blasting bass since the 80s. I could hear it as a kid across the river, or maybe it was all gunshots and buildings falling. The buildings were falling because of the bass. No lies detected. <laughs> mm -hmm. Rev Rat says, uh, I plead the fifth. And Freakenstein says, Ben will be using Whisper 1 million by the time he's 65. It's slowly starting to happen. <laughs> Charlie C says, I knew a guy back in uh, Brendanton, Florida, that would replace the AC vents in, in their minivans with speakers and had nothing but speakers and batteries from the second row. I've seen yep. stuff like that, too. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. When yep. the bass looked, the, it was so much power being drawn. Every time the bass hit, the, the, the lights would dim. Almost go out. Yep. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Let's see. And uh, toy warp has it here. Now, the only thing is, I know with uh, you know YouTube and, and copyrights in terms of music. Um, yeah, we're not going to be able to play that here. <laughs> yeah, I do not own the rights. Fortunately, but 
you know, I will just have yeah, because they did copyright the video. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> wow. I didn't get a copyright. I didn't get a copyright strike, but I, I totally understand it. It's their song. I used their song. You I know, don't, it's I don't. It's their property, so they should. They should. Um, you know, they should get the the money from it. But yeah, all this is going to, you know, like what's going on in the song. So it, like everything's like really timed up. I, I cut out all the to the chatty bits of this car chase, and I cut out a whole bunch of other stuff, and mashed a whole bunch of other stuff together to, I mean, to make it look like a proper music video. And I can't believe no one on YouTube had done that at that point in time. Well, look how old those cars look. <laughs> like. <laughs> You watch your whore mouth, okay? <laughs> Old. Those are 1990s. Be careful. That's crazy. That's right. Man. I mean, That's the right. Transformers are 40 years old. I mean, this time is going by fast, man. Mm -hmm. It's okay, man. You got to shit your dirty mouth. <laughs> I used to yeah. love those Caprices, man. I used to love them, man. I still got my 78. But yeah, I like said, like, I'll... All this is um, all this is time to what's going on in the song, and um, I posted it in uh, here. You get there's a link in here you can see on the sidebar. I also posted it on the Chill and the Primus uh, Facebook group. If you're not part of that uh, and you're watching, uh, feel free to look up Chill and the Primus on um, on Facebook. We have a group over there, very small, but um, so is the channel. It will grow with time. Mm -hmm. And, if this and then uh, Reverend Rats Rides. Yeah. I will also post it on the Cruisers. Uh, Facebook group. Love the line. Tom, I mean, uh, uh, Tom Cruise is a freaking vampire, man. Yeah. Well, he, he looks, looks the vampire. same. <laughs> it's all, it's all the same. He still looks the same. <laughs> Crazy. There's my car in front of the Days of Thunder Barn. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's sneaky. Just throwing your own thing in there. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Yeah. Well, I kind of, I kind of made this thinking that with this, I thought this was going to get more views than the Days of Thunder Barn video that I did, um, and then the Days of Thunder Barn video blew up, and this didn't get hardly crap. I think this only has like thirteen hundred views. Days of Thunder Barn has got eighty thousand. Wow. Jeez. I, I, I really thought it was going to be the reverse. YouTube never ceases to surprise you. Mm -hmm. When it comes to mm -hmm. what people will watch and, and whatnot, I kind of thought this was what's gonna how I was gonna lure people into watching the the barn video. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but okay, so um, the dust bit. Yeah, we got to get to the dust bit. Yeah, the yeah. dusting. Show us the dusting. <laughs> wow. All right, so. When it comes to the dust stuff, guys, um, Johnny brought up a real good point about your AC filter. You definitely want to change those every three months. More than every three months, if you have smokers in the house, um, your, yes. your, two biggest, your two biggest producers of dust inside of a house are people and pets. Mm -hmm. Because most of your household dust is literally dead skin cell. Mm -hmm. Okay? So... Mm -hmm. um, the more, yeah, I know, right? It, that, um, the that more is what people is. you have in, in running in and out of your house. So if you are like a family man and live with kids and a wife and all that kind of stuff, you're going to be changing uh, filters more. Again, what's going on, D? I came here for the uh, for the uh, dust display because uh, <laughs> I got a whole ton of dust here. So I'm open to all your suggestions. And I've heard right. a lot of great stuff so far. It's because so, you're carry, dusty. Carry on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I don't know. If anyone's dusty tonight, I think it's old man Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, old man Johnny. I mean, sadly, I think I'm older than all of you guys, so shouldn't I be the dusty one? Oh, you're, I mean, you're, 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 you're not uh, wrong. Uh, 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 so. ashy, ashy and dusty are two different things. Wow. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Who are you calling Ashy? <laughs> I mean, I might have a little dust on me. I ain't Ashy, though. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the oldest here? 
I'm, I'm the oldest. But if uh, I mean, if we're gonna make this like a racial uh, topic, then. Uh, <laughs> 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 Then, then that makes Spinnel not the oldest, because as you know, black don't crack. <laughs> I'll take all the positive stereotypes. <laughs> well, uh, Freakenstein says, I dust every week and I do fill cleaning once a year with water. Well, okay. All right. Interesting. All right. The this whole is idea method. is to keep the amount of uh, dust in your house down. So, like I said, your two biggest contributions to um, dust in your house are people in and out, uh, mm -hmm. pets. You know, especially like me. You know, I got the big dog, and she's got a lot of dog dander, a short-haired dog, a lot of a lot of dander. But also, uh, anything you have in the house with with hair, because it, hair follicles, like on pets, will fall off. And what happens to those? What happens to those hairs that fall out? Well, they go to the ground and they go to they they whisper up into uh, uh, different areas like underneath the couch and stuff, and it turns to dust, and then the mm -hmm. air blows underneath the couch or whatever, and comes back up into your house. Um, the uh, uh, the first way you start um, find your orbit. What the hell is that? An edible? I have no it's idea what that is. Yeah, THC. 200 milligrams per piece. Nice. I thought that was an anti-dusting thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are they sponsoring us? You are right. <laughs> that was about to say, are they sponsoring you? And then Rev Rat says, I'm so old. <laughs> I'm so it. old, I fart dust. Um, <laughs> but I guess going over to what you said, Toy Warp, um, especially with pet, pets, um, I don't recall if dogs or cats, which one of the two um, have more fur... You know, kind Same of lose thing. more more fur and dander, um, which I find with especially tabby cats. What most people don't realize, and what I used to do is, you take like the old like hair clippers, um, you know, that you use for, like for your own hair, and put on like the the one or two clip, and just shave off all like all that extra extra fur, like every at least every four to six months, um, which is actually good for the cat itself, because then they're not always licking that fur and getting the hairballs um but it hel it it helps significantly around the house in terms of <clears throat> reducing all that extra you know dust and cat hair that that accumulates oh yeah i feel you i when i um all right so don't let people come in your house basically and make sure you, and, and make sure you shave your pussy right there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we as children of Primus do not condone. Disgusting. I'm Ain't just no summarizing. I was just giving a summary, that's all. <laughs> Fear the has disappeared. <laughs> what did the animaniacs say? They're like, Mwah. good night everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Drop the mic. Yeah. You know, please like our videos and subscribe to our channel before YouTube uh, just uh, <laughs> cancels the channel. Finn <laughs> <Spin, laughs> is so scared of YouTube, man. He, I'm I'm pretty sure that if one of us said something wrong enough, Spin would like be cowering, looking at his front door, afraid of the YouTube police coming into his house. <laughs> I fear no one. I do not fear YouTube. I just want the stream to keep going. <laughs> Well, now we know whether D spits or swallows. Continuing on. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I got your back, Spin. If they come ahead, we're going to jump you through his ass. <laughs> wow. Which, I mean, at oh, this point, man. you know, it, you know, those watching, research YouTube, Google, and Boston Dynamics, um, or Boston Robotics, and there is a bit of fear that should be there because we're talking about... Um, a humanoid a robots fear. and an animal <laughs> robots that all the that ones are, they keep beating up. Yeah, and you know, you, like you throw in a little AI there, and it's like it's you know the six of us versus one of those robots. Like we're we're already defeated. You know, as uh, yeah, as, yeah. as Cup would say, you know, have you ever seen the size of one of those monsters? <laughs> have you ever seen the size of one of those monsters? It's like, come on, Cup. Like a thousand of you versus three of them, and like we were outnumbered. We were outnumbered. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's here's a, a, a disgusting um, fun fact, right? Right, yeah, fun fact. Okay, you ready? You ready? Okay, you're not allergic to dust. Okay, there are microorganisms inside of dust called uh, dust mites. 
-hmm. Now, you're not allergic to dust mites either. What you're te technically allergic to is They're dust shit. mite excrement. Oh. That's right. Wow. Okay, now throw that into a uh, dust mite excrement on your on your collection. What are how do you uh how do you deal with that? Okay, first you off, cut the crap. <laughs> get some toilet paper. Get a big ass roll of Charmin. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, first off, keep your stuff behind glass. Okay, that's mm -hmm. that's rule number one. Um, when it comes to cleaning it, and you don't just want detoff cases either, okay? Detoff cases will keep the dust down, but it won't keep all the dust out. You want something that's got somewhat of a seal on it. Mm -hmm. um, my cases from KB Toys uh, that I display my Transformers in, um, those actually have like a rubber seal around the door, so when you close it, it goes up against that rubber seal, and it keeps it pretty much dust-free for a year. I only clean those cases once a year, and the one with the cracked door on it uh, that dust can creep into, that one always has more dust on it than the one that doesn't have uh, a cracked door. So there's your experiment on uh, you know which one will get more dust and how much dust actually gets inside those cases. Um, can you see how much dust is on this guy? Give me a full screen while uh, Tor Works talking. <laughs> You got no, dusty toes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a little Look bit. It's not toes. good, but I can see it in that yeah. resolution. Dude, give yeah, me a right. full screen, please. <laughs> please, Michael. That's my extra man. <laughs> <laughs> Optimus really stepped in it. Fags. <laughs> Mike. Mike. Uh, so I got to paint. I just, you know. We need to get poop bags ooh, full for the mice. No, 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 no. Uh, depending on, I wouldn't use a paintbrush so, I mean, unless it's like one of those really silky ones. Soft. Unless okay. it's what? Soft. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, my, myself, like the, the that tool I brought out earlier, though that all those attachments with the bristles, all those attachments mm -hmm. are uh, microfiber. Yeah, so they won't scratch the paint, right, is the point? Or the plastic, because um, yeah. dust will actually attach to plastic like right, electrically yeah. bond with right. that plastic and that's why when you have like a really something really dusty okay so let's say this was really dusty and uh it was shiny before when you cleaned it the shine was gone that's because you've actually taken a layer of plastic off with the cleaner getting the dust mm -hmm. off there the dust actually takes a, a microscopic layer of plastic with it that's that's no joke that makes sense. Um, wow. Unless it's got some kind of paint on it that's baked on, which really works with like, uh, which really works with my diecast stuff. But you know, uh, it's not near as fragile as the, the finish on, you know, like mold, molded and color plastic, or even worse, something with stickers on it. Well, I would, <clears> I would <throat> say a wet interval because I mean, not everyone has either. Everyone doesn't have the budget or the space to do glass cases or especially like sealed glass cases. What intervals should they should they dust figures to prevent when the dust starts to become a part of that plastic? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I'll, just, I'll, 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 I'll mention this. Uh, Bobby, you guys know Bobby's my favorite viewer, Bobby Skullface. And he mm -hmm. actually, a couple years ago, he did an episode on this topic. Um, and his stuff is not behind glass, most of it. Most of it is in bookshelves. Hmm. Um, and he just does like a once a year thing. He spends like a whole day, takes everything down, dusts everything, and just does it once a year, the entire collection. And that's, that's, his, that's his advice. And, you know, he's, he is a professional. So, uh, yeah. Okay, well, what, that what's crazy, his lifestyle? Man. What's his lifestyle? But, does he have pets? Is his house uh, vacuum exactly. sealed? Um, you, uh, you, how many you, you, people you, you, does he have inside and outside of his house? Look, I also want to say you can uh, talk to you can watch Bobby's channel if you want to know the answer to all that shit. I'm not his uh, reporter, but uh, <laughs> TF Johnny, I like I like also your suggestion of just rotating shelves. So I think you could do like once a year or once every six months. Anyway, toy work to your point It's like how how much dust do you accumulate? You may have to do it more frequently. But what I have started doing is uh, is just like once a week I do a pr one shelf and just rotate the shelves, which is very similar to what uh, something that TF Johnny mentioned earlier. So I think if you just do it that way, like don't treat it like a great big, uh, cause that's initially when I looked at this and I was like, oh my God, all this dust got all over everything. I'm like, this is gonna be a hassle to do. 
But if you just do it systematically a little bit each time, then like the dust doesn't accumulate. So, so in other, so like I have way too much stuff here to pick up and play with the way Anthony does. But, but Anthony's point was he doesn't get the dust because it's constantly moving. So just mm -hmm. by rotating the shelves, you know, do one shelf per week, I, I think that I'm sort of simulating uh, what, you know, the, the effect that Anthony's have. And, and, and uh, I'll and say this, that way of getting, yeah. I'll say this too to kind of piggyback off of, off of what you're saying. Mm. And if you get a system in place, you know, um, yeah. whether it's a few every few weeks or whatever, however, you know, you get something in place and you do it, right? Yeah. It's easier to um, kind of touch up afterwards, right? Like if you do right. like what a toy work was saying that the dust bonds chemically with the with the plastic. Yeah. And I know that to be true because I've put in old Transformers with probably 40 years of stuff that was on it I had to clean off. And right, it was right, like right. I had to like use chemicals to get the crap off because it was that right. far along in the process. But just right. like if you wash your car and uh, mm -hmm. say you get your car washed on a Saturday and say Wednesday, midweek, Wednesday, you notice there's dust on your car. They sell like little, um, I don't know what they're called, but like uh, duster things. Mm -hmm. Where well, you could just run across wands, your car and get the dust off. Yeah. It's easy yeah. to get it off because the car was clean is my point. So once right. you get a good right. cleaning on them and you get a consistent schedule, it's, it'll be easy to get to keep the dust off. Now, see what right. D's doing now, though, all D's doing is transferring that dust right. somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, that's true. true. That's true. Uh, but anyway, that's well, somewhere else is better than on the figure because it's not going to on the plastic. But yeah, it's still in the room. Yeah, it's still in the room, which means it's going to attract back to the figure eventually. Right. Um, right. I recommend uh, the spray glass cleaner. Okay. Uh, you want to get the glass cleaner ammonia free. You don't have to spend a whole lot of money. They're all the same. I worked at a car wash for 10 years. I know all these are the same. Okay. You can buy the, the $8 a can invisible glass. It's the same as this like $1.50 can from the, from the dollar store. All right, okay. You want it to be $1.50. Yeah. Um, so like when you're cleaning your plastic, um, get the can shook up here. And when you spray it on, a lot of people will just take a rag and wipe it off. Okay. Let me see if you can get it good in the camera here. They'll be wiping it off. Now, mind you, when I'm wiping it off, you see where my thumb is pressing here. I'm just pushing it up into the crevices of like what that window is. So when I pull back, yeah, sure, it looks good overall, but there's going to be a whole bunch of dirt and grime and stuff caught up inside those crevices. So like um, Johnny said earlier, you, what you actually want to do is you want to spray a Q-tip down with the glass cleaner. And I got a little bit sticking off there now. And then you want to do all those little crevices. And that's how, uh, Johnny, you were saying earlier where you couldn't get the dust out of the, uh, out of the areas. Um, th there's another product called Tough Stuff. Um, spray some Tough Stuff on um, uh, Q-tip. You know, get get up in there, let it sit for a minute, and then turn the dry side of the Q-tip over, and then get the rest of the stuff off with that. That will get all that little stuff out of the out of the little areas. Um, now, give me a hot second here, and I'll show you how to do something else. Okay, while you're saying that, let me catch up on the comments. Uh, Frigenstein said, uh, I just had some gummies, 100 milligram each to celebrate getting 900 <laughs> subs today. Congratulations. Oh, congrats. Congratulations. congratulations. Rev Raps Rise Good is a uh, YouTube, uh, like, I guess it's a police department. Open up, you violated the, the, the terms of <laughs> uh, Charlie C says, you need to shave your pet's balls so you don't get any dust <laughs> out of your fingers. <laughs> or get a sphinx still, cat. Still yep. the dander. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. RJ Eagle says, hey, guy, great to see everyone. Glad you're, still, you're here. I mean, we're almost wrapping up, uh, but says something came up last moment that missed the beginning but catching up on the messages now and i'm gonna throw a question to you rj um do you have your collection on a shelf in glass cases or in boxes um frankenstein says most are mm -hmm. of mine are packed away in plastic wrap and actually i'll throw that to everyone in the comments um are your collection on shelves and glass cases <laughs> or or um shelves glass cases or, or in boxes and rj eagle says i always wondered if dust acts as a protectant for, from uv rays that's ash how johnny how did you do that and uh, <laughs> frankenstein i'm just going to freeze all my toys in epoxy resin clean the cube <laughs> not the toy <laughs> what? nice nice alvin that's how i sum up your alley buddy mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> 
Never That's have okay. to worry about it again. <laughs> That's like... <laughs> nice. Yeah, he, no, here's what Calvin would do. Calvin would just open the box. Calvin will open the box, pour the epoxy resin in the box, and then... Just... <laughs> Bob's, Bob's your uncle. Yeah, and then it would form that like the box is now like the you know yeah. the casing that's to the mold. form. Yep, that's the yeah. mold. That's the yeah, mold. I'm, I'm actually, I'm starting to see that too though. Like the box are starting to warp, oh. which is crazy. So I but might all the more reason just throw the epoxy in there to keep the shape. <laughs> yeah, I understand I think, uh, yeah. having to keep all the boxes. There's a bunch of '60s, '70s, and '80s toys. This whole closet goes way back in there is just boxes and boxes of box stuff wow damn wow. <laughs> mask toys transformers stompers rough riders yeah. mask box hot for, wheels for the day that we one day get a museum and then mm -hmm. we can just yes. display everything <laughs> that's the go that's the fucking ultimate i wish i just i wish i had room to display everything but the transformers and stompers are the only things i have room to display I'm gonna tell you when you know you're bad as a collector, right? Because we're looking. I live in Washington D.C. right now, but we're mm -hmm. looking to move to Delaware to like live and retire and all that, right? Probably the next two or three years. Nice. And Delaware, if you're not aware, I know you guys are Canadian. Is like for the East Coast is like kind of like the country, I guess. I mean, it's around like in between Baltimore, Philly. So okay. you still have major cities around, but it's still like Delaware. So you know what I mean? It's not. It's not urban the way D.C. is. No, nah, it's not want. urban. No, but right. nowhere near right. urban like D.C. No, but right. DC's urban. so <laughs> one of the major factors in, uh, for me, well, for us, because we're together, but really it's me. I'm looking for a, a place, a huge spot where I can have my collection. Mm -hmm. Like, I like this room. I like it. Most people don't even have a room just for collection. One. But I want Please. bigger, bigger, yeah. bigger. I do. Well, I mean, that's the uh, one. Yeah, you know the one game plan where it's like the further you move away from the city you you get more space you for for less you know the same price yep. or less then you've got the sure. option of like here's this whole extra room let me turn that into like you know into that room that that i've dreamed about because i didn't have the space before right yep. right that's the goal yep the basement i want like maybe half of the basement nice and um and just just do what i want to do with it man you know, I love Transformers. I'm a sneaky I mean, too. So, so check this like out, uh, Johnny. Johnny, did you see when we had uh, AJ on the show? I was just thinking of that. Asia. Uh, uh, AJ. AJ. So, yeah, we uh, a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago, we had a guest. Uh, what was his full name? AJ. What? Uh, AJ Artman. Um, well, he is. He. Was anyway, the world, the the Guinness, Guinness Book of World Records. Guinness World, Book of right? World Records of over five thousand plus Transformers, which I think so just, has ten thousand. But that's wow. on one of well, our I previous wanted... streams. Yeah, in a couple wow. of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he was dope. AJ was really dope. Um, wow. And uh, and what he the way he had displayed it is exactly what you said. You know, it's like he he you know got to his house, he got the room, the basement, and he like had his vision from childhood, and he manifested that vision. Wow. And, and what he did. And it was the same thing that I was always, that I, he, what he used for inspiration was the Transformers catalog, like the 84 catalog and the 85 catalog. And then he built his shelves around that concept. And that's always been my idea, which is why I've got the red here, right? It, sort of to simulate that red background that we, that we got in that 84 catalog. Um, but yeah, anyway, if you go back and look at that episode, like the, what he did, the custom shelves that he made, the way he set up this Transformers, that was really awesome. And, and that's the thing. Like, you got to put effort and money and brain power and visualization into your setup. Not only, see, I'm, I'm a figure guy. I'm going to always get the figures, 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 and I figure out how yeah. to display them afterwards, you know? But sure. I mean, that's, time, how, that's how all collectors are. We start first with the figures, then it's just glass. Then eventually, if you get serious enough, you start making a more elaborate display. Yeah. So that's that's the goal. Yeah, that that'd be dope. Yeah, yeah. And so you guys, I don't know if you remember, like my stuff at my previous place, all my stuff was in glass. Um, mm -hmm. And I, uh, uh, but that's not what was stopping the dust. It's just the you know the house that I lived in. I was in I was in Madison at the time, right in Wisconsin. Even though I was in a city, it's just a much smaller city, and there was just way less dust in that you know in that place. Um, but yeah, but like just putting them in glass, it looks cool. 
at first, but then after a while you realize, okay, that's a little bland. Like, there you go. Like, it, it, that's bland compared to this. Yeah, that's dope. Right? Well, actually, yeah. let me uh, quickly run through the comments. Um, and then I'll, I'll play that video. Or actually, I'll play it while we're... Uh, okay, he's showing some of his collection. Uh, RJ Eagle says, My collection is all on platform shelves, glass cabinets, and open figures are in bigger boxes and containers. Uh, Charlie oh, C wow. says, I heard that glass is not meant for cleaner for clear plastic. Is that true? Mm. Uh, Freakenstein says, Man, I wish I didn't say that now. I'm going to have to make a lamp with transformers in different stages and transforming alt modes and rj eagles says are your inbox figures are those inbox collectors taking up massive amount of spaces um <laughs> let me go back a bit here as rj was showing his his collection yeah look at that <laughs> that's mm -hmm. fun that's fucking that's amazing bro and that dope. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. And you can watch that episode on the Children of Primus YouTube channel. Children of Primus, that's correct. <laughs> uh, actually, Spin, uh, a suggestion for the channel is get the live shows their own playlist. Uh, the only way when hmm. I go to the channel, the only way I can bring up the live streams we've done is to go underneath live. Give them their own playlist. But they are in their own playlist. Um, there's a f Frenzy Freestyle Sunday playlist. So I'm going to have to do my homework and make sure that shows up on the home screen. Because all, all of our episodes of the Frenzy Free Freestyle Sundays are under that playlist. And the shorts have their own playlist. Um, yes, the they do don't. now. Uh, before, they didn't. Oh, ah, okay. When did you add that? Um, I think maybe like a year ago. No, it wasn't. It, it uh, hasn't shown up for it me. It wasn't a year. It wasn't a year ago, but yeah, it is up now. Okay. Yeah, cool. it's, it's up now though. Okay, good. No, Toy, Toy Boy brought up a good point too, um, about the uh, the details, and people think because you get those that they're like dust proof. Right. No, not, not, not and they not are absolutely not. Especially, especially, especially the bottom shelf, and I'm talking from experience. Yeah, so yeah. The, the dust shelf, all goes on right under that, right under oh the, those doors. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, isn't that terrible? It's like it almost it almost feels like that bottom shelf there collects dust, right? It does. Yeah, yeah. Because when you're walking, it's like it, obviously, it's like it sucks it in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I know, I know we're gonna, I know we're gonna be running low on time here, and instead of showing you how to clean the stuff with the stickers, let me let me say this: the best absolute thing you can do as a serious collector um, is to vacuum seal your house. Okay, uh, like with uh, Magnus, him having that upstairs with its own separate uh, AC mm -hmm. system and everything yeah. and yeah. not having anybody up there. That's about as, as close as you can get to perfection. Also, when it comes to preserving plastic and stickers and paint and everything, uh, a little secret, 72 percent humidity is where you want it. That is where stuff oh, is not too moist to where it'll ruin the stickers it's not too dry where it'll moist stuff like rubber it will ruin stuff like rubber tires uh it won't dry out the plastic it'll keep the plastic just moist enough yeah 72 is the magic number how, on that when it how comes okay, to how many hold, 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 how many people go ahead go ahead no, i'm sorry I was wondering, how does 72 percent humidity correlate to degrees like it doesn't you can have 90 yeah, degrees yeah. and still have 72 percent humidity dry heat, like dry heat. Yeah, no. it's not the temperature that's killing you. It's the humidity when it no, comes to... I was to... just trying to gauge in my mind without having to buy some kind of meter or something. Well, that's I... my question now. So you should have let me go first. How many people <laughs> oh. on the screen right now actually have a, 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 a monitor that's going to tell them what their humidity is? I'm sure Come everyone on. owns a cell phone. A yeah. smartphone. Yeah, that, that'll do it for you. Doesn't You're welcome. Really? You're welcome. So you didn't have to talk in the first place. There you go. <laughs> no, no, no. That's no. That's don't. No, seriously. Look, look. There. We all. We all know. On a serious note, right? Like these cell phones that we have have mm. so many more features than any of us are using. So that's important to know. Like what sensors are on your phone and what you can do with it that you're just ignoring. Like I'm. I'm interested in in knowing that. So that's news to me. Do you have the humidity app? Do you download the humidity app? How is your phone I'm, measuring the humidity? Uh, ask Leanne. Apparently she does. Um, I don't need it on my phone. My thermostat has it. 
Yep, my, thermostat can't, my thermostat can't so much adjust the humidity as it will tell me the humidity. Yeah, I'm just and saying, where's the sensor? Where's the sensor? Uh, up, your, up your butt? I don't know. But the sensor's, <laughs> the sensor's <laughs> built into it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, dude, if it, for some, someone who's a serious collector, um, basically the same as like those thermostats you put on the wall. Um, there, you can get a humidity sensor, and the sensors are built into that same little unit. Yeah. I'm aware of that. I, I was what? asking who has it. Off a of well, comment. I I... You got one? Mm -hmm. You have one? Oh, that's cool. So so just from life I experience, it, just from life experience, right? I know in general, like in colder weather, the air is normally more dry, right? Yes. So well, if you keep your house kind of cool, I would think the humidity wouldn't be, unless you have standing water or something in your basement or something. I don't know. You know? Well, I mean, it's generally, like, generally speaking, but not necessarily. You can have a you can have a cold, damp environment, as, mm -hmm. as Toy Warp said. Like the moisture in the air and the temperature of, uh, of the environment, those are not the same. Two those are not the things. same thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, two different like things. Yeah, yeah seventy two. It, it, temperature doesn't matter when it comes to humidity. Like I said, you can have seventy two percent humidity and it be thirty degrees out. You know. Mm. Or you can have 72% well, humidity you know, at 90 degrees. Precipitation, I would, I would say. Let me see if... Uh, yeah, so Leanna sent a message. Although, oh, you know what? I will... Uh, yeah, I'll Is that, send us... That's the device you're showing that. a picture? Yeah, that's the device. device. Fix, so I'm gonna, okay, cool. Yeah, send it in and then show it on the screen. Um, but yeah, it's just a small digital device. And I think that one is like just sticks on... on um, has a magnet on it. So it's stuck yeah. on the front of the fridge. Cool. And then is it does it have like a Wi-Fi transmitter? Is it transmitting to the your phone, or else or or uh, she's just reading it right off? She's just reading it right off that device. Either or, uh, just off that device. Yeah, yeah. But you can get smart devices as well, right? Like you yeah. know, Internet of Things type of thing. And dehumidifier is not that expensive either. If you just need it to yeah. have, you know, mm -hmm. right. Right. And Re Rev Rats Ride says uh, your household AC can assist in removing moisture from the air. Yeah, I have a little portable one, and it does that. It collects, it pulls moisture out the air, and it collects. I dump the tray. Yeah, because I don't, I don't yeah. have central air in this house, so I have a little uh, Wait. unit in the collector. I mean, in my room, I put the uh, exhaust thing through the window, and it removes um, moisture and cools the cools the room. Yeah, cool. Okay, so yeah, Leanne, Leanne G's answering my question. She said it's not Internet of Things. It's, she says no old school. Lol, I walk up and read. All good. Yeah, I mean, I, I got an old dehumidifier too. I'm not. I don't know if we can actually do readings. I just crank the thing to a specific number out of like ten, and then it'll it'll turn on until it's not that humid. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I suppose so. Uh, back to tour work. You're saying seventy two percent is the ideal. Obviously, higher is worse than lower. Um, but uh, but I suppose like so if you're dehumidified like you don't need to make sure it's 72 you just make sure that it's not humid you know in your environment that there is uh that there's low moisture but toy work you're saying 72 is optimal uh i guess because if really if it was really dry then maybe that would be bad for your collection long term too maybe that would make the paint brittle or something like that it's not that or it the makes the paint brittle. brittle it breaks down rubber tires so like your rubber tires mm. on your optimus prime they're, they're going to be broke down and, and and tore up it breaks down the stickers if okay, there's not enough moisture a, you're saying if it's a dry environment yeah 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 that's okay. what you just asked right yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so the dry environment is drying up all the rubber okay yeah, and a lot of times rubber, too yeah. like a lot of the little pc parts a lot of the gears a lot of the seals and stuff yeah. inside are, are mm -hmm. rubber uh look at um gi joe figures they've got the uh the, the oh, rubbers yeah. Inside, it's all deteriorated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All, those those, all those, and those O rings deteriorate, and the guys mm -hmm. move all wonky and stuff. Yeah. So again, another toy to tell you that um, uh, a to, lot of my GI Joe, a lot that. of a lot of my Joes from the '80s are really loose, like at the waist. And the reason mm -hmm. they're really loose at the waist is because those O rings deteriorated, and so I just put regular elastic bands in them, which were not nearly strong enough, right? But I, you know, as a kid, I just take them apart, put the other back, elastics in them, but and then be irritated that it wasn't tight enough. <laughs> that humidity piece was a good good information, though, because you know, know that now. So if you have to, uh, for whatever reason, you have to put your collection 
in storage, you know you want to yeah. get a climate mm. control right. in storage. That's, right, right. Yeah, right. That's, sure. that's great to know. Sure. You no know where I learned that? No kidding. Um, I'm a Titanic historian. I have been since I was 14 years old. I went to the Titanic Museum that now is in New York. It actually started off in Xenia, Ohio. And uh, I spent all day there talking with the, the curator. And um, that's yeah. where I learned that was the stuff that he had in the cases that some of it being from the time period of Titanic, some of it being from Titanic, but it was all preserved at 72% humidity. Hmm. You know, and then going with that detail, um, I know with some houses, depending when the home was built, I, I would say probably houses in the 50s, 40s or 50s, um, some people will store stuff in attics, which is very dangerous, oh, depending on <laughs> on the insulation of, of the house, or even if it is insulated, because um, I've seen some houses where during the summer, the attic is basically an oven. Um, it is. So that's one issue. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. in the winter, it's it's a it's a freezer. Um, but right. then I found and, in some and of... very damp, and it's gonna and mm -hmm. and often very moist as well. But but then I found in some of those homes, um, the garage was actually the best climate controlled environment. Whereas like in mm -hmm. the winter, it's surrounded it's by cement, so, so it's picking up the heat from the house and just making it you know a comfortable warmth. And then in the wind, and then in the summer, it's a bit cool. Um, nothing you're talking in, about in, attached. Uh, you talk about attached yes. or standalone. Attached or detached, attached. as long as it was brick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if it's brick, it's a uh, stuff in the garage could sit in there for like years. It's perfect environment, no damage. Or, yeah, I mean, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, not so much brick, but um, you know, brick and mortar, uh, cement blocks. You know, that that mm -hmm. type of construction. Uh, Reverend Rice says, I went through the Titanic exhibit at the Florida International Museum. Was that the one that was in Orlando? Because that was hilarious. They took me through that one, and half the stuff they were telling, half the stuff that the tour guide was telling you was wrong. I had to I had to correct them on <laughs> so much shit. <laughs> I, oh, no. So, where are you located, Toy Warp, again? I'm in Sarasota. I'm about an hour south of Tampa. So, I, I was in Florida. You know, I have a, we have a condo down in Fort Lauderdale. We go mm -hmm. once every other month. Well, anyway, my, my parents were in uh, Kissimmee. So we drove from Fort Lauderdale up to Kissimmee, yep. which was three hours. Yep. And we went, man, and uh, we had a good time with the I mean, RV. There was an RV park up there. What's, what's up with these cut off, uh, these alligator heads? They sell all these alligator heads up there. Okay, listen, man. <laughs> I can't be responsible <laughs> for what is called inland Florida. Okay, inland, <laughs> Kissimmee is inland Florida. Mm -hmm. That is some redneck territory, and um, I don't go there unless I'm going to a racetrack. I don't go there. No, man. I, I don't. I can't tell you what's up with th those heads because I don't do inland Florida, man. I mean, every stand, every store had got alligator heads, man. It's crazy. Wow. It's so well, you you snowbirds, you tour snowbirds, buy anything, really? <laughs> wow, it's kind of yeah. ridiculous. Rev Rats writes, uh, says St. Pete's, and uh, Iceman is holding his hand up to answer a question. Yeah, I used to live in Jacksonville, so those alligator heads, <laughs> those are just trophies, man. <laughs> it's all right. It's okay. They don't bite. Just stare at it and pet it. That's all you got to do. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, uh, since, since we uh, we don't have a CBR article for this week, I, I, will, uh, I will give that bad museum a uh, it's <laughs> my favorite thing that makes me so happy <laughs> what hmm? oh, okay let, let me run it again well you do it, do have it. you ever heard of the cbr website i've mentioned it a few times and their articles are just completely disastrous two thousand dollars two thousand dollars two thousand dollars yeah, last week, uh, last week or the week before, they did an article on like ten of the Ooh. most expensive transformers, or, or hard to find. And at the end of each, uh, at the end of each men item they listed, they said two thousand dollars, and mm -hmm. we just kept saying two thousand dollars through the whole article, except for like you know, <laughs> every one of the transformers would go for two thousand dollars. <laughs> every one of them. So, so next time when I'm gonna show a CBR article, um. I'm going to lead in with this. <laughs> we 
where's Professor D? He's missing the action. He's gonna have to what watch What does CBR it on stand for? Uh, uh, comic book resources. <laughs> oh, but somebody came up with something better last week, and I don't even think they meant to. What was it? Was it a crap bottom run or something like that? Yeah, something like that. Crappy oh. bad research because they don't. <laughs> <Yeah. learn. laughs> That's exactly what it is. <laughs> yep. There is. Uh, speaking of that, I uh, posted the link to. Um, not a two thousand dollar transformer. We got up to Optimus Prime. I think was what number two on the list or some stupid like that. But yeah, peep peep that um, peep that link. Oh, I say spinning a wheel in anticipation. <laughs> oh, I thought it's look, not, I thought somebody was about to start busting a freestyle or something. I'm about getting them vibing. I'm oh, ready. somebody should make a beat out of this. Well, yeah, man, come on. Kick that ball. There we go. <laughs> Come on, Calvin. Kick that, man. I try. <laughs> I'm white and I have two left feet. I'm sitting this one out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the link's not working. Let's, uh, oh, no. Let's, let's send, it, send it in the chat or try resending it again. Professor yeah, B is missing. It. Okay. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not calling him Large Professor D. Large. No. Nah. I call him pro Professor. Professor. <laughs> I'm a large. The large Professor. The extra P. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Obviously, he's a professor at large because we don't know where he is. <laughs> Put an APB out on him. <laughs> APB out on, on there Professor we go. D. Once he comes back, we'll stop talking about him. <laughs> That's how it works, right? Yep. Anyway, that link should work. There we go. It is a working link, and it is not a two thousand dollars if it were listed under CBR. Oh boy, that guy's and, his prices are crazy though. Zoom in on those prices, man. Look at those. But eBay that guy prices. really knows his stuff. Anytime yeah, he you does. buy something from that guy, yeah. he not he verifies everything. Right down to the do. accessories, everything. That guy really knows his stuff. I, I really <laughs> like buying from that guy. He's the biggest. Uh, he's the biggest uh, transformer seller easily on a uh, G1 anyway. Yeah. On eBay. Fair, this is about as mint as it gets. So. It's a guy named Ratchet. Um, uh, I am Ratchet. I think he's pretty pretty good too. Oh, a check out. Well, it about. does a thousand dollars. Twenty-five thousand. Yeah, is this brand new? No, it's yeah, it's, yeah. it's sealed and uh, graded. That's uh shit, you know. Down the road, that might not be a, a bad price, actually. Actually, I see. I see in the next fifteen, twenty years that the prices of G one stuff really coming down, like the Boomer Toys have. Honestly, why? Because Boomer Toys have crashed, just absolutely crashed. Like the stuff yeah. that Boomers used to collect, Boomers have either died off, collected yeah, what they want, quit collecting you know, had to sell off the collection because of financial needs or whatever. That but it's stuff different. isn't worth anything anymore. Nah, this is different though. This you know what you know what the Transformers remind me reminds me of? It's it's kinda like um Beanie it's, Babies. It's, no, it's kinda like Jordans, like the old Jordans. They keep coming back mm. and I think they hold that type of value because the franchise is still alive and kicking and uh still pretty uh and they have different layers of uh, generational fans and um and a lot of well, honestly, a lot look a lot of collectors that I deal with, they're not my age. I'm 46 years old. A lot of these guys are like in their early 30s and some in their 20s, and they know everything about the uh, G1. They know they know they know their stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. So it just feels like that. Um, this this is just it hits different than like uh, what is the boomer toy that was popular? Uh, Tonka trucks. I got I I collected a lot of Tonka trucks over the years. It used to be worth. Uh, a pretty decent amount, and the prices of them have, have come crashing down. But they didn't have, like, a cartoon and movies and all that to really boost it, you know? Like, Transformers is like a like a whole different, mm -hmm. you know, Three. thing, you know? Well, you might yeah. be right. I, I actually hope you're right. Honestly, no, I hope yeah. it keeps its value. Well, hold on. I hope it keeps its value and everything, but my God, I hope it hits a ceiling somewhere. Because right. I've had to, <laughs> I collect the Stomper trucks from the 80s. Uh, mm -hmm. The shopper stomper trucks. There's just a four wheel drive toy about that big. Uh, it was the foam tires, and they had, they climb the tracks and stuff. Mm -hmm. I had to quit collecting them to afford transformers because they have gotten to be as much as transformers are. 
the prices wow. on them are just just they just keep going up and up and up and i can't afford them anymore so why, why, why do you think that's happening is because of scarcity or what uh, it's a rich man's game i guess uh, i don't know I, mean, I honestly are don't they, know are because they a lot they're of them on eBay for like if you go to try to buy them, are there a lot of options or not that many? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of options, but um, when you're talking the the level of collection that I have, both in Stompers and Transformers, I don't buy junk. No, okay, I don't buy heavy playwear stuff. I buy something if it's out of the box, it's going to be super nice. Um, and then if I if it's in the box, you know, I want that box to be gradable. So I buy my stompers the same way as, as my transformers. And when you're talking quality stuff like that, well, when you put it in context, that context, that kind of makes sense. But if you just talk about a guy who's just collecting and have a piece of nostalgia, they could probably get something that you might pay five hundred for. He could get for what forty bucks, thirty bucks or something. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, but you know, I'm I'm not that guy. I'm a serious collector. I gotta no, I have. Am too. I am too. I, I gotta have the nice nice stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I don't buy junk. That's not. Reverend mm -hmm. Rats Rise says, "How's the market for the original Hot Wheels red lines?" That's another line that just keeps climbing and climbing. <laughs> um, even the '80s stuff has with Hot Wheels has finally come up in value. It didn't for a lot of years, but um, uh, it's. Hot Wheels really drops off in value uh, when it comes around about 1995 when they bought up a whole bunch of other companies and cheapened up the cars. Yeah, after that, they're pretty much worthless. Well, I, I think, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking in terms of like, you know, previous generations when they were like fans of Elvis um, compared to Transformers, where for Transformers, many of us, you know, early 50s it may still hold on to a certain price value in our 60s and 70s but then you look at uh, like fans of elvis um you know it was you know the elvis beatles and and certain things of that nostalgia within that generation once you know those elders which was more our parents generation once they started hitting their 70s and 80s um some of those some of those things that were collectible started losing their value because it's like, well, the only people collecting those figures, <laughs> <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. That's you a know? good point. And it's for like us, you know, for us, for yeah, because yeah. no point. one, yeah, no one in our generation is collecting that stuff because we're not attached to it. I mean, like you know, I I love music, so I I love Beatles stuff, but I don't put it on the value as say our parents where it's like the Beatles were new as they, they grew up with the Beatles in a sense where we grew up with Transformers. So the value is going to be a, a lot different. So to, to that point, I think that overall toy collecting in general, because I think, again, we come from a golden age where there was a lot of great stuff that came on 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. These kids are like doing everything digitally and Pokemon cards. Like that's their thing, right? Yeah. So I think that figures as a whole, that's what I said, Hasbro really... If Hasbro had any sense about them, they would really listen to us because, for one, we have the money to buy these expensive toys to see what we want so they can make money, you know? Because um, I think uh, as we get older and die off, the whole toy thing is going to die with us. The uh, physical toys. That's funny you said that about Hasbro because they don't get a dime from me. <laughs> well, you know what? Yeah. They get they get plenty of dimes from me. I'm not going to lie. I wouldn't but, mind uh, finding an old Snoopy snow cone machine uh, you know what? I have one that, Ooh. frankly, I would give to you. Oh, I, I think I have one. I'm not quite sure where it's oh, I at. See that. Oh, Rev Rats like has, has no. won the bit, oh, I like Snoopy. Okay, uh, that I was got a one. Toy back in the day. I got one, you know, because I never had it. And I got one. I was all excited to get it and everything. And I started doing research on, you know, like what years it came out and everything. You know, that thing has been reissued twice. Oh, really? I did not know yeah, that. like whatever. I don't yeah. remember. It's been a while since I, I read up on it, but it's been reissued twice. So, and there's zero difference in between the original and the reissues. So, mm -hmm. there's no value in them. Wow. Wow. There's no there's no date stamp that different differentiating them. Uh, there's it, it all is the original day stamp, kind of like Hot Wheels cars. Like under underneath Hot Wheels cars, when you see a year under a Hot Wheels car, mm -hmm. that is the year the casting was made, not necessarily the year the car itself in holding your hand was made. Interesting. So when you wow. see like this one, probably dated seventy eight, seventy nine. Um, I know for a fact that my parents probably didn't buy this till about eighty three, eighty four. Wow. It, it wasn't made in seventy nine. That's just when the casting was made. 
a lot like um, Transformers underneath. When you see 1974 underneath a lot of your G1 Transformers, that's when the original molds and castings were made for the metal and plastic parts. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, but, you know, you know, Hasbro was making that shit in the 80s. And, yeah, uh, and Soundwave. Soundwave 74. Yeah, yeah. Prime that's is. Um, I think Bumblebee is. Um, wow. Wheeljack. Yeah, because the sneakers had 83 on them. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, when you think about, like, the molds being in the early 70s, and you think, like, they were engineering and designing these, these things from at least the mid-60s. Probably, yeah. I'd say, yeah, I'd say like late 60s, early 70s. And on yeah. top of that, if you notice the actual cars that they're after, uh, all that stuff from 74, those are all, you know, 75 or older cars. A wheel That's jack right. being the, the All Italia. That was a rally car that was already on its way out in 1975. Volkswagen Bug. Yeah, that that was... Um, Baby bug that was be. molded. That actually, that that's molded after the Classic. mid '60s bug, without yep. all the the plastic and uh, chrome trim deleted on it. That the '70s bugs were. Uh, uh, Optimus is actually a '74 yeah, Freightliner 550D. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. But you know the funny thing about Optimus is that design carried on through the like the early '90s. Mm -hmm. That cab yep. over mm -hmm. truck, that same exact design. Well, there's a few comp auto companies were, were like that. Basically, you know, they just found a mold that works, and every year after, they just kept to the same mold. And only later, you know, they started slightly doing redesigns or complete redesigns. Which makes sense because uh -huh. it was a commercial vehicle. Like, why mm -hmm. are you going to try to spruce this up when it's a work vehicle? Exactly. You know? So Charlie C yeah. says, I think Stretch Armstrong was a boomer toy. I, I no, he was 76. He was yeah, he was a thing in the nineties. Still, I saw commercials for him back in the day. Him and he had a villain called Vac Man at that point, and I didn't know that it was an old thing. It was treated like a new thing. He had a cartoon too, right? Hey, I don't know. I never saw it. I just oh, remember the lore man. of the toy commercials more oh, than anything mixing else. Them, oh, I'm mixing them up with um, who's the uh, the leader of the Fantastic Four? Uh, Mister oh, Fantastic. Uh, Mister yes. Fantastic. Yeah, and then there was also, and then there was also Elastic Man from the uh, Super Friends. Right. Oh, that's who it is. Uh, good, good call. That's who it is. Not, not uh, not um, Elastic Man. Elastic Man. That's it. Red there you Red go. Says, uh, that I just and... sold that. That is crazy. So we're gonna round up within the next eight minutes. It is a uh, ten. It will be ten thirty p.m. Eastern time. Um, but again, lots of useful hints and suggestions and any, any, anything, any suggestions that people have that we haven't mentioned, throw them up in the, in the comments for anyone watching later on. Cause it was, a, it was a really good topic. And I mean, everyone is affected by dust on their, on their <laughs> collection. <laughs> can I add one and thing? In, and in other places. <laughs> but so what Spence said earlier about the attic? being if it's not insulated being extremely hot and cold i learned this the hard way right oh, no. by <laughs> storing stuff up there electronics and toys with electronics oh. in it and it just melted like um i was wondering why my dad why is this not working with a tv i just bought it yeah. and um oh. I, just, oh, you know, I, knew, I knew it was destroyed so i opened it up and all the insulation had melted it was it was oh. a hot mess in there wow yeah just Brutal. from heat you know i didn't know you mean the styrofoam? Are you talking about the no, styrofoam? No, the installation on the wires. You know, like a on wire the wires. Copper. Yeah, okay, on the inside of the, yeah. On the inside it of just the melted thing. all that, it melted wow. everything. It just destroyed that's it. That's brutal. That's sad. Yeah. But yeah, yeah that's right. irreparable, right? You can't put it. I don't you know what? but it's learn some, from it. Yeah, it's something that, that's easily overlooked. So I only store paperwork in, in the attic, but I would have done the same thing. And only because when it was summer, like I opened up the hatch to go in. And it's just a heat wave just came out. I'm like, I can't keep anything in here. And then during the winter, same thing. It's just, it's freezing. You've got to keep that hat, that hat shut. So imagine having your whole collection up there for whatever reason, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody had like, for me, like so, suppose a relative had to live in this house. They fell on hard times. We had to put a bed in here, whatever, right? right. So I put everything up in the attic. And I go up there because it gets extremely hot, like you're saying. Oh, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. T.F. Johnny, uh, I, there, there's a few people on the screen uh, who are distant relatives of yours and have come into hard times, and and we're all uh, appealing to just move into that room there. 
<sighs> you can move in, but you'll just have to live with my figures. We'll put a bed right no, in. No, that's room. why do you think you really think it's because I want to live with you? <laughs> 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 well, like Johnny, like Johnny said before, if you're moving in, you gotta nominate some money. There you go. There you go. That's fine. Go. That's, I mean, I could bring a few figures. Good point, Toy. Good point. Don't worry. I have Call friends. Large. Wait, Calvin, what are you saying? I have friends. <laughs> the reason why y'all having all these problems are hiring squirrels to slip in your attic so they can cause problems and chaos. <laughs> <laughs> Calvin, the squirrel master. <laughs> the squirrel whisperer. That's your squirrel boy. <laughs> Rev Rat says, dang. How does the squirrel whisper? <laughs> the squirrel whisperer. <laughs> no, I think that would be a good cartoon. I would watch Calvin, the squirrel whisperer. Like his... <laughs> and then, oh, versus Ghost Dog with his pigeons? That would be a dope. <laughs> That would be a dope versus. I have a feeling this cartoon's going to be nuts. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Okay, guys. Guys. Like, three-way battle. Who wins? Uh, Soundwave with his cassettes. Ghost Dog with his pigeons. Or Iceman 1979 CC with his world. Come on, girls. I don't know that Ghost Dog is uh, go, go. I see I see Ghost well, first, Dog and Iceman, you know, getting it into the finals there. Ghost Dog okay. just threw me. The whole premise of Ghost Dog threw me. This out of shape dude <laughs> with with braids living in the hood, and as he's a samurai or whatever the hell he was, it just threw me off. I don't know. Give me Soundwave for the win. <laughs> <laughs> The robot is more Iceman. understandable. Sorry, Iceman. Boris Whitaker does nothing for me in terms of being intimidated. Well, oh, the damn, damn, the factor is damn son. And even <laughs> even with the the assistance of the great sensei Rizzo? Splinter. <laughs> the Rizzo makes good music. Now, if you talk yeah, about Splinter? battle rap and he's producing it, yeah, give me give me the Rizzo. Because remember, Splinter was trained by his master, Amoto Yoshi. Camouflage Camille, get it. your pills in. No time to go for the gun. They already got your wife and children. Nice. Hey, look, look speaking of hip-hop, right? Did y'all see the uh, the Superstar Adidas releases coming out? The uh, the Ninja Turtles Shell Toes? No. No. Yeah, they're coming out. So they have oh, a raffle. Funny. Yeah, I think it's 130 bucks. I'm going to get them. I'm going to try to get them if, they, if I get picked. Dope. They come with like a cartoon spe specific to the shoe. It's pretty That's cool. cool. That's yes. cool. All right, well, let us know. Keep us updated if you win. We, yes. we, uh, we're cheering for you. Appreciate it. Yeah. I'm counseling everybody orders. Nah, he was to a Peterbilt. He wasn't a Freightliner, right? He was a Freightliner. He was a Freightliner. Mm -hmm. It would be ironic, though, if he was a Peterbilt. Peter Cullen. No, Peter yeah, Bill. Freightliner. Would be yeah, I know. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> easier actually. No, but Peter Bill is the later ones, right? The yeah. later, uh, the later options. No, I think those are the Western stars. I now, believe. he was a Western star in the fourth one, but yeah. before then, yeah, I think he was a Peter Bill, and they probably did that on purpose at that point. That it will make sense. Peter Bills make the best trucks to me. Yeah, I drove trucks for thirteen years. So I'm kind of qualified. Again. Oh, for real? Nice. Yeah, in another life. So did you ever, so T.F. Johnny, has, yeah. ha, I, I assume at some point in your life, you must have like looked at used uh, trucks and tried to find an Optimus Prime truck. See if you um, can add that to your collection or no. You talking about a real truck? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Spin and I've always talked about I'll that. We're like, we got to buy that truck. He's going to need you to nominate some money. <laughs> exactly. yeah. Well, no, this is, this is my idea. So what I think we should do is we should we should pool our cash we should buy a truck like an optimus prime truck paint it up like optimus prime and then put the transformers inside the trailer like set up as like as i mean i already got cliff jumper we can put cliff jumper in the trailer a mobile hmm. museum just travel around the country yeah yeah no exactly exactly yeah there's a guy we, uh, on instagram um i think his name is like my name is optimus prime or something he is the uh the long nose the peterbilt um, whatever oh, movie he has it? from. 
Say again? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. No, yeah, yeah, but it's still long. But ago he has one, that, so, and he just, yeah. that's what he does. He goes around the 48 states and makes appearances it's, and yeah, beautiful. Really? Right. It looks just like the really? movie. Really? Yeah, yeah uh, so I thought I thought about that. Like, if you had an Optimus Prime truck, you throw the, your collection in it and just go to conventions. Yeah, okay, people, hold yeah, up. People will come look for sure. People yeah. actually make a living on that because a buddy of mine actually <laughs> has a Knight Rider replica, and mm. that is literally what he does for a living. He takes it to all these what? big conventions. Yeah, he does it for a living. He takes it to all these big conventions and makes a fortune off of being paid for having the car there. And then while he's there, you can do the Knight Rider experience where you get to sit in the car and get your pictures inside the car and then you wow. get a little die cast with it. So, yeah, he makes so, a living so on that. How is he show. doing that? How is he doing that getting around like whoever owns the name and all that stuff? Uh, it's actually a um, certified replica. Ah. It's actually certified oh. Oh. through uh, probably Universal, I think, still owns the rights. Do they get a cut of like, what he makes? Or? I don't think no, so. No, but he paid a lot of money to get that car given that it's certified. Like that, yeah. He didn't get that on a deal. Right, he paid a lot of money for that, and that was an investment. And part of buying a car like that when it's certified is you get to make money off of it. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, I guess that's the same thing with anyone who owns General Lee's that that take them around to do the exact same thing. (laughs) Probably DeLoreans too. Um, There are so many General Lee's out there. I mean, there's a ridiculous. Yeah, I don't know about General Lee's. I think General Lee. I don't think they would be licensed. I don't think Especially you can get considering it's a Confederate flag now. Like I just, I, I don't, don't think be, not just because of that, but I'm saying because you can literally make one now for way cheaper yeah, than buy a it. real one. Right. From a, from a crown Vic. Yeah. What do you mean yeah. by a real one? You mean just the car itself? Uh, okay. Yeah. Car? okay. Like, no, look, uh, imagine trying to make yourself a kit versus trying to make yourself a general Lee. Like right. kit, you, it's a more expensive car and you got to do the whole inside to look a certain way. Oh, Whereas kit, a general yeah, Lee, sure. a general, general Lee is a paint, car, job. paint job. Right, right. No, 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 right. no, no, no. Okay, that's, that's not quite what I'm saying. What I'm saying is they reproduce, guys, what they're doing now is they're reproducing the general Lee because 69 chargers, you can't touch a running one for under a hundred grand anymore. Okay? Oh, okay. Uh, 69 chargers are just through the roof when it comes to pricing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Especially oh, the so, oh, so so a funny little thing is that I was I was assuming, but wrongly, as, even as I was saying it, I was like, I don't know about these facts. Um, I was assuming that the base car would be more expensive to do a Knight Rider car than a General Lee, but probably not based on what you're saying. now. No, you, I can still pick up a, a Trans Am for under five grand. You know, an 83 you really, Trans Am. I can, you can still... I, I can still pick up pick up a running one for under five grand, and you don't need really? it perfect because you're going to have to be doing all the body work and all the all that special interior stuff. You're yeah. going to have to be doing all that anyway. With a charger, oh, so you guys, kind of... we should make a kit. That's going to that sounds like we could do it for ten thousand dollars among our, oh, our network. Oh, easy. Okay, you can buy the car, like the base car, a base Trans Am for under five. It to turn it into kit will cost you yeah. more than a fucking charger. Would yeah. cost you more than really? generally. Purchase. You couldn't do that with twenty. <laughs> okay, ten G's was wrong. Twenty thousand. You couldn't do it. I mean, it's tank and like I got a, a whole, local just company a that actually does it. I to look exactly years. like kit. To, yeah. to look exactly like kit. The last time I checked in on those guys, it was thirty grand. Yeah. And that was yeah, but that, that's because that's what they can get for it. But you know what? That was seven or eight years ago. Yeah, but if all that somebody would pay would be twenty thousand, all of a sudden they would drop the price to twenty thousand. I, I I don't know because um, the companies that make that still make the um, the body kits and the interior with the TVs that that dash mold and everything, mm-hmm. all that stuff was actually if you want it screen proper. Yeah, no, but Toy War, listen, I I know what you're saying, but your information is old and you're not thinking about the fact that of like what manufacturing it. Is happening over the last just in the last five years and the last ten. Like how we can three D print all this stuff, you know, like to make those custom panels and stuff. That used to be expensive. That used to be like only certain people could make those kits. Now anybody with with some brains, a little bit of money, can make it make panels. Well, it gets because you didn't let me finish. If you want that <laughs> okay, stuff sorry. screen correct. What the companies that are offering the stuff, they actually took the molds from the original screen used yeah. parts. So yeah, but it, I, it's not I, a matter of getting the measurements and making sure the measurements are right. No, these are actually. No, you're, the we're talking apples parts. and oranges. You're not talking the same thing as me. I'm saying we could make it 
for a certain price. You're saying go to the deal, the official dealer, and they're going to charge you this price. That's a whole different thing. Well, so why a, would I want to make it myself and take a possibility of it being wrong? Third party transformers. You're the guy. You <laughs> exactly. It, there's different. There's different guys on the screen, right? You're the guy who's going to buy a, a bumblebee for a, an astronomical <laughs> amount of money. <laughs> All right. Yeah, because and, and, it's and, original. And, 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 I think, and I think that's a little crazy, but I have all kinds of things here that other people would think is crazy. A little so crazy. It's just, yeah, exactly. What's so the it's different priorities. Oh, hold on a minute. Oh, crap. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll show got, this here, let's look at mine first. Yeah, look at my before Bumblebee Before we wrap first. up for the evening, as, as, <laughs> as Toy Warp gets his Bumblebee, Professor D yeah. has his Bumblebee on the screen. All right, so here's mm -hmm. a Bumblebee, and this is not an 84. You can tell because look at that face. Correct. The animation it's face mask. He's got the animation head. It was in focus a second ago. Really? Anyway, you got the point. Yeah, reissue and with the animation head, which is kind of cool. It's a, it's a, this was a really cool uh, item when it first came out. But Toy Warp has a slightly cooler Bumblebee. Let's have a look. Ooh, plastic sleeve. Yeah. Oh, shit. That's, uh, that's insane. Is that great? What's the great? 98? <laughs> well, there's a story with that too. Yeah, I, I learned my lesson on grading, that's for sure. But that's also signed by Dan Gilvers in the original voice. So, so nice yeah, that's fun. um. I when I initially bought this, I think I gave thirteen for it. I gave thirteen hundred for it. The guy wow. said that it had um, a slight, it had a slight break in the bubble. Well, I looked at the pictures. I didn't see it. When I got it here, I'm all looking like, I don't see no break in the bubble. Well, you know, guess who found it? The, the guys who graded it. Um, when he break down the grade, see if I can read it here. The, uh, the card back got an 80. The figure got a 95, but the bubble only got a 50, so it only graded at a 50. That's graded a 50? Yeah. Yeah, that. because of the bubble. It goes to the lowest, um, it goes to the lowest part of the grade. And the, since the Christ. bubble had a small break in it, the bubble only got a 50, and that's the lowest part of the grade, even though the card is an so, 80. Let me ask you this. So since the bubble had a break in it, the figures, it, they, they rated me. the figure a 95 instead of a right. 100. Yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not why. That's not why they only graded the figure at a 95. Um, think about it. The figure sits inside that bubble rub it up against that cardboard there could be some paint on the back of the leg that might be rubbed away you know at least a molecule or two they yeah tell you? these guys are tell you? listen Dude. hold on hold no they on. didn't tell me why not no johnny look before you feel, start feeling all sympathetic for this guy too bad for for toy work okay <laughs> let's 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 keep in mind one thing, okay? He thought he was running game getting this for $1,300. When anybody who reads any CBR article on Transformers <laughs> knows <laughs> that it should be $2,000. Oh, well, see, no. that's why, that's why I graded it, so it was worth $2,000. Uh, obviously, something was up. <laughs> <laughs> that's a tag team that's a tag team right there we're yeah. working it out we're right. getting so, it going now so as as we uh wrap up for the evening uh mr fair courage what do you have coming up for this week <laughs> well uh first of all a uh, on friday i posted my review of retro perceptor so you can all check that out on uh children of primus.com slash news and reviews uh, that is live right now. Um, then uh, next next week, it's been long enough that I'm taking some time to do a uh, non-bot review, specifically of yet another Samus, because I have to do the things I like, specifically the uh, Jack Specific one that you can only get in the U.S. that uh, Mr. Setem Bach Arts was nice enough to link me up to. It's uh, basically the same scale as Star Wars figures, so uh, I'm going to nice, be having a look nice. at that. That'll be coming out cool. on Friday. And beyond that, you know, I don't know. I got a few things here I can look at. I can look at uh, 
Studio Series Eraser, who I have pretending to be a Chozo statue because I did that for the photo shoot for that Samus. <laughs> uh, cool. yeah. That's dope. That's dope. Uh, Samus is a female, too, if you don't know. No, really? <laughs> no, not you, not you. The other guys in the room. <laughs> I know you. Know. Yeah, and beyond that, I don't know. Probably yeah, the stuff yeah, that I, uh, yeah. probably the stuff I unboxed today. Rumble and uh, little, little, the little rare burning Cheetor. I don't know. I have options, but yeah, uh, Perceptor now, Samus in a few days. That's what's coming on childrenprimus.com slash news and reviews. Cool. Toy Work Vintage reviews on YouTube. What do you got coming up for the week? Uh, this past week, I just released the video. Finally, finally got it out of the way. And I feel like there's like creative dam that's broken finally. But I finally re oh. released the video on Orange Blossom. Uh, so go check it out. And I decided to oh. that um, I'm just going to finish off the, uh, the SST toy line. So the next one up is going to be Black Gold. So that is the next video that's going to be releasing on Toy Warp. <laughs> um, also, I got a hold of Nacelle Toys uh, and am in talks with them on how to proceed on getting the licensing rights for Bigfoot and the Muscle Machine. So we'll see how that Oh, nice. nice. So, well, I can be in the cartoon. Because you are <laughs> Professor D. You're not exactly a 70-year-old black guy with white hair, but, you know. Yeah, there's some similarities. Some of them are white. Some of them are white. He's a elements. Do you have a pet armadillo named Dilly? I do have one of those, yeah. You want to see him? Yeah. Yeah. Here he is. Dilly, right here, my pet armadillo. I like that. I like that. Instead of a pet armadillo, you're going to have a little pet transformer when I when I read it. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, no, we just, we just, <laughs> it's, it, it's an updated version, right? We're not going to make it exactly the same. Nice. But, uh, TF Johnny, what say you for the upcoming week? Uh, not much. I, I really haven't bought anything here lately. The last Transformer I bought was the um, the Masterpiece third party um, Wonderful Trans World, I think, the Optimus Prime. The mm -hmm. um, IDW uh, Optimus Prime. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. Let me grab nobody, it. Nobody knows what figure you're talking about, actually. Another uh, Optimus Prime. Who knew? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh okay. okay. Whoa. Why does he have a spoiler? Oh. Does his head be down force? I don't know, but what is this? Why does his head be down force? That's what is this cool. design? No, no that's, that's dope, man. This is dope. I got that cool. Wolverine claws. <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah. I can't get past the spoiler behind his head. Why does his head need down force like a race car? What uh? What company He's is this? Yeah, no, that looks good. Is nah, that the Fast so... and Furious version? No, no, it's just got a wing and a body kit. What the hell is going on here? It's a stylized IDW version. It's Hulkbuster. So, so is it made? So, do you think it was made by Generation Toy? Nah, or some nah. like a new? No, it's like a new it doesn't feel like them. Okay, so what's your company? Yeah, no, it, it gives that feel, kind of generation. No, that's what I'm. That, this is yeah. what I'm saying. It's like yeah. the suspicion. You know how companies yeah. have to change their names. No, so, that's a good company. Like, as you're showing it to me, I'm like w looking at it. I see the like, size, the 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 plastic, yeah. the metal. Yeah, it's definitely that. Yeah, I give it that. And it, I mean, yeah. it, it, it looks like a very complex transformation. I haven't transformed them. I heard it was okay. Um, I bet I it's going to be hard. Right. done it have broken pieces yeah. off. Yeah, you know, that's Generation Toy, bro. And that's yeah, who it I'm is. I'm keeping it. I'm keeping it that is. I love it. Yeah. But you I know you owe me a 10-second truck, right? Stay again? You know you owe me a 10-second truck, right? We made Making a Fast and Furious reference because the thing looks like it's out of Fast and Furious. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I've been, I've been, I'm a sneaker guy too, right? I love music, sneakers, and Transformers. That's what I like. So I've been getting a lot of... Um, some of the old retros, they redid the uh, the breads. I don't know if you guys are in the sneakers, but the Jordan 4s, the breads, the reimagined, mm. they put them out. I got those. Mm. I got a couple of cool. the, uh, the Yeezys cool. that came out. So just other stuff other than what we're talking about. But, cool. Yeah. Uh, Iceman1979, what say you for the upcoming week? Oh, boy. Do I, got shit? <laughs> oh, I, sh I shouldn't tell you all this, but I finally got my hands on Servo Bolt. Just wait for him to come in the mail. Ooh, I'm nice. waiting. Dream, uh, Dream Star? No, this is from uh, the Legacy, Legacy or something, United or something. Yeah. So, Star Wars cool. guy. 
Oh, okay. so yeah. And I'm waiting. I'm waiting for Bird Dog to show up probably Friday or Saturday. Mm. So, and then not only that, I'm waiting to hear back from the Transformers movie that's supposed to be coming out. Oh yeah, there's, I can't there's wait. figures. There's figures that's coming out. People don't know what's going on. Walmart has them right now. Which one are you talking about? Rise of the Beast? Or you talking about the Transformers One? Transformers One. Ah, yeah, the, is that, the cartoon. That, oh my god. That they've shown nothing for. It's a complete mystery box. We yeah. don't know anything. Well, we know what it's going to be about. That's enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> well, but, yeah, but the thing of it is, Target and Walmart are getting the figures in the box. I've seen three boxes. Huh. Three of them. Cool. And and I said, I said, what? What the? F-? I'm like, hold up. And it, it got a little red sticker, so they can't do nothing until June or August or something. Hmm. You know what I do with that? Because sometimes I target gets those. I st- I'll take two figures up there because they'll get stuff they weren't supposed to put out and they'll put them out. Mm-hmm. I'll just scan yeah. the other one twice, put that one back, and get it. They yeah, don't but care. these the targets don't care in my area. Yeah, yeah, but these, mm-mm, nope, nope. You got it. like literally, like dude, people are getting fired right now. They're getting fired. Like literally, like this stuff is not to. Not supposed to be on shelves. As soon as that movie dropped, I think it's in what in the in the fall. Yeah, I think it was September, August, or September. Because they got the toys street date. It's going to come out a month ahead. They're supposed to be doing some kind of TV show or premiere, hmm. and it looked like they got the retro Optimus Prime, an Alita One, Ultra Magnus, and a couple other figures. And I'm just sitting here like, you got to be kidding me. But we we haven't seen any like previews or anything for this, right? Nothing. Not yeah. yet. Not yet. Not yet. That's the thing that gets me. We don't know what any of these guys look like. Right. Mm-hmm. Is it, it's going to be animated, right? Yeah. yeah. They look like they're humanoids or something. Huh. But what the understanding is, before they became like the tr- like transformed the stuff, they look like humanoids. Hmm. This Transformers One. This is before the the the, the Transformer eighty six movie. Well, I'm excited because I love Megatron's origin story. I love it, so I can't wait. So I'm sitting here just puzzled. Like when they when they put them out, I'm buying every last one of them. <laughs> Literally, I'm not gonna miss a beat. I'm gonna buy them. Probably post them up. I may take two of them out of the box. And see what it whoa, is. Whoa, whoa. Ooh, you're going to take him up a That's big. Now, that's a big step. This is truly you momentous. You know, yeah, I was like step, leaning Cal. back like, so what? So what? I don't care. <laughs> they take, might take two out of the box. I that's was like, okay. That's shaking yeah. things up a bit there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You woke me up. <laughs> Living on the edge. You're <laughs> crazy. And hey, somebody got that kind of thing. And for those living on the edge, like our video, subscribe to our channel, subscribe and check out all the other channels that we have listed in the description, like TF Johnny, Toy Warp, and Iceman, Professor D, and, and everyone else, like Toy Facts. And thank you once again to you guys coming through. Thank you to everyone in the comments. And as we say at the end of every stream, till all, till all, 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 all one. Bang.